It should be good. I should have lined it up right. Yeah just, yeah, just make sure that we're looking, looking good. Searchable as reptiles. Using that from the Lord of the Rings with the hobbits and the wizards. That's yeah, right. you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. That's really nice of you, man. I thought so too. It's really nice of you. Yeah. I feel kind of like I, like. Well, this is the great thing. We're also going to be talking behind your back. That's yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's you just have to like turn your head 45 degrees and pretend like we're up there somewhere. Yeah, so yeah for those you, for those guys that only right. for those guys who only listen to the audio podcast, we're like sitting as far away as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Garrett and I are both sitting against the headboards of uh, the hotel beds. Adam's sitting in the middle ahead of us, so. He, He's looking straight forward and can't see either of us really unless he looks back. And it's, but, but it does, as we met, it, you know, you got the force perspective. You look as big as us now. You know what it feels like? It feels like I'm being interrogated by the laziest detectives ever. Just like laying right. <laughs> <laughs> laying right. No, we just, Where were you that night? We don't want you to see our faces. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Yeah, Was there a face. porpoise? <laughs> I want to, uh, can I have some whiskey? Wait, first. For the people who are listening going, who's Adam? We should probably introduce ourselves. So I'm Garrett from Reach Out Reptiles. I'm Brian from Brian Cusco Vlog Channel, Triple B TV, Freedom Breeder Editor, uh, Searchables Reptiles, MPD. Filmer Editor, uh, the guy that supports my entire family, just like Garrett does, I guess, support my entire family. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Adam... Wiccans from Wiccans Wicked Reptiles. If you're watching reptile videos on YouTube and you haven't come across Adam's channel, you probably haven't been watching too many reptile videos on YouTube. And he's down here from Canada. We all just finished doing an enclosure build off at Snake Discovery with Emily and Ed at their soon to be open reptile zoo. And uh, I think it's a pretty strong consensus that we all know that my mushroom enclosure is going to place somewhere between first to tenth but if it doesn't they should vote for mine instead right right i think everyone kind of mentioned that actually yeah if you don't vote for mine vote for garrett you were the first one that broke the trend yeah i had to i just felt like i kind of want a plaque i'm very selfish and i know that you deserve to win so therefore i'm gonna pander to an audience that's how i'm gonna win yeah well, it's nice of you to admit here that i deserve to win well i mean uh, by the time this comes out we'll Class. know who won probably right Urban. Oh, when, when are they doing the vote? Oh, I guess it's going to be... Well, it's going to be the same day that they put up... They're doing a part one, part two. Thank you, sir. On Tuesday and Thursday. When? Um, Tuesday and Friday. Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday and Friday. And then they are going to put up a, um, a community post the same day that the... I'm assuming the part two. They said the same day the video, but same day the part two pops up. Adam, you want to tell us what we got, what we're drinking there? I would love to. This is Penelope Bourbon, something I've never heard of before. And it's barrel strength. Yeah, 57.6%. And it's it's numbered, the batch is numbered, number seven. Corn, so obviously 51% or higher corn if it's a bourbon. Rye, wheat, and malted barley. And this was donated by our good friend, Matt, over at SoCal Herbs. Right SoCal right? Herbs, yeah. If you want to get the uh, hognose snakes. Oh, my gosh. He has the best hognose snake. Or ever. Croc Skinks. I love that channel, actually. Yeah, his Croc Skinks are even better than hognose snakes. <laughs> so. Which is saying something, because he produces some pretty amazing yeah, hognose snakes. Really but, yeah, does. he is I'm our getting better. He is our bottle sponsor. And which, by the way, the bottles already have gone from the pores. We just had Garrett's over here like, here, you guys, let's have some pints. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, I every... only wanted to pour once. I've been on a few Adam whiskey podcasts. Uh, I did not pour my own. I did, oh, did not, you? you porpoise. And, uh, oh. yeah, I've had a few uh, of these tastings they're never like this <laughs> never they're like hey, let me just fill these this are up skinny little. glasses that is true. they're skinny and tall it's a it's an optical illusion oh there's no and brian complaining. likes to drink so he just got a lot <laughs> <laughs> i was drinking at the applebee's already though we were, we were drinking in the parking lot we, i brought my glass into the restaurant Everybody was cool with it, though. The servers, everybody. Did you actually take your glass oh, into yeah, the restaurant? Right mm -hmm. I didn't even notice. I had a drink for a moment at the restaurant. <laughs> My lips are a little bit chapped. <laughs> yeah, this I can let feel you it with this one. I'm going to let you know it. Oh, that is good, though, Matt. This is... Um... This is my favorite... Okay, so this is my favorite barrel strength that I've ever had. And... It's probably my favorite to drink that we've been here since I've had Eagle Rare, which is my ultimate and all-time favorite. 
Eagle Rare 10 is hey, a good guys, one. Look at Thomas. He's sitting on a pillow in the bathroom. I was just going to say, like, wow, you that guys are relentless. really mean to him. <laughs> no. Him and his bucket hat don't care. He, 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 he chose. <laughs> a little bit of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what you're saying because you don't have a mic. But yeah, that's, okay. that's right. That's true. Don't get the reaction. <sighs> My watch has been buzzing. Oh, Dave Kaufman just texted me. He wants to know if I have the snake. Do you? Do you? No, I don't. Where is it? In Dave's trunk. Ed's got it. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, by the way, my enclosure, if you guys haven't watched already on any of the videos of one of the 10 YouTubers that was there. You should probably back up oh. just in case they haven't seen it. Okay, let's back up. Wait, yeah. so, so when does this come out? On the 17th of this month. So, so Tuesday. Exactly. Right. Already so, Tuesday? So that's going to be... So this is coming out when they air part one. That's true. So you're going to hear it here for, first, folks, because we'll go over the whole dang thing. Yeah, I, I that's got right. No secrets. It's like a prequel. Not on this podcast. Yeah, you, were, you listen to Search Those Reptiles, you're getting everything firsthand this time. Not like the other times. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, Ed and Emily from Snake Discovery invited a bunch of YouTubers out so there was 10 contestants, and they had, like, sponsored cages. We all had the same cages, a whole stack of supplies, and it was just like a build-off. And then what they're going to do is uh, auction off the cages, I believe, and then donate the money to U.S. Arc, yes. which is amazing. So, um, so that was really cool. So people traveled from far and wide. We had a few Canadians come in internationally, kind of internationally. And which then, is a hard, which is a kind of a uh, tall order for Canada right now. Yeah? Right now, yeah, it was a giant pain in the uh, arse there, but it was worth it. It was definitely worth it. I uh, had a wicked weekend, or it's not even a weekend. It's like Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite kind of weekend. Yeah, but yeah, it was totally worth it. But yeah, it was uh, one of those things where I will wait till I can drive across next time because it was something else. The flying process. Oh yeah, man. Like I've had everything. two COVID tests in the last like four days. That's crazy. You guys need COVID tests to fly? No. No, that's what not I mean. at all. I got one at a shopper's drug mart, which is our main drug store, and they're like, this is fine. And then I got the second batch of boarding passes, and they're like, yeah, it has to be a PCR test. So I had to get another swab done at an airport for $200 American. Well, the other thing is it has so to be stupid. within a recent amount of time, too. So a lot yeah. of people are saying, well, I got my test. And then they're saying, no, no, we need to get one like today, basically, to mm -hmm. get through. Well, I booked it, so I had mine on Monday. I flew on Tuesday, but it was an antigen test. And that's not good for Canada. Apparently, Canada's too good for an antigen test, I guess. So, anyway, so I've had a lot of swabs up my nose lately is what I'm trying to say. Sweet. Great. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. But, yeah, but then, then we had, uh, there were contestants ranging with, like, they're all YouTubers, but they had sub counts from, you know, 100-some thousand all the way down to, like, 3,500. And then we had, um, so the whole gambit. There's so many different personality types. There were men. There were women. The youngest contestant, Hunter, was 15 years old. 15 years old. So, I mean, it was... Hunter Houck. I, I love it. I, I love the way that they, they put all that together. And then the other thing is, like, super cool for them to invite everybody out to their channel. You know, you know what I'm saying? Because they're sharing a massive platform that they have bled, sweat, and yeah, I cried believe over. they have the largest reptile channel besides Brian. They're not past Brian yet. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. But I, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do pass them quickly because they are ramping up quickly. Yes. Yeah. Well, they're. So. I'd say their view counts definitely. Oh I mean, yeah. I, I think they get no know. less than like half a million. So on every video. last night at dinner, Emily was saying that. Oh, I have to go home and do my thumbnail because I haven't done my thumbnail yet. And I woke up and checked the video, which he posted at, sometime after dinner. And it was at 114,000 views. Yeah. I've got like three videos that crushing are more than it. that total. Crushing it. Like, and you know yeah, what? It's crushing. It, it's such good content. It is. And it's, wholesome. It's, yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's, I, I think most of the, the comment, like half the comment section where it says wholesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's so wholesome. It is. It's so wholesome. And yeah. it's just like everybody can watch it. It's for kids. It's for adults. My dad watches it. He's never held a snake in his life. So he messaged me today. He's like, you know what they should do? They should raffle those off for US Arc. I'm like, that's such a great idea. They're doing that. <laughs> you know what's funny is that all of my employees used to watch my channel. And then once they started working for me, they switched to Snake Discovery. 
That's every <laughs> single one of them. Like, nah, we watch Emily now. That's fair. Uh, Thomas is in the bathroom on his yeah, pillow saying that he never watches anyone except. Adam. I like the bucket hat guy. You know, <laughs> Thomas watches my channel on occasion. Only to study the competition. He's to study. The <laughs> he, he said knows, only he to, to study to the competition. The, the good uh, B-roll shots. Yeah, that's what he said. That's exact word for word. That's what he said. He's, he's waiting for you to slip yeah. so he can criticize your work. I went for the crispy B-roll. Is what he said. I think quote <laughs> quote end quote. Yeah, yeah, crispy, crispy, yeah. crispy, crispy. So no, their stuff is great though, and I, I just thought it was really cool for them to do that, and the the way they brought the span, it wasn't like just their friends or their favorite people or whatever. They they really, you know, got a ton of different people from all over the place. I think it was like you just know. channels that they like or like that they... Well, they had breeders, they had pet tubers, mm. they had all the different, you know, angles from the industry. Herders and yeah. scientists. Mm -hmm. Right. So, oh, yeah, I guess, yeah. Yeah. That's I'm just, telling you, it was diverse. It was great. The only thing we all had in common is that we had something on YouTube, so. Well, the funny thing is, like, half of us got to get together on a regular, fairly regular basis. I mean, it was yeah. Dave, Clint, you and me were literally all together at this exact time last year on right. a movie trip together. Like, that happens. Well, and that's that, happened several times. But I think that was more of a coincidence. It was because, definitely a coincidence. Because, but, like, if Dave had planned it or I had planned it, then probably, yeah, it would have gone that way. But we didn't. Right. That was, so, was definitely a coincidence. Yeah, so that's... No, I liked it. It was really cool. It was, it was to, awesome. I had a blast, I, dude. I haven't got to meet you before, ever, Adam, so... I haven't, met, I haven't awesome. met anybody. I didn't even meet... You've been on our channel before. I've been on both of your channels before. Right. And I, I've talked about both of your channels on my channel before. Right. And I hadn't even met Dion, and he lives 45 minutes from me. Really? We wow. never met until, yeah, until dinner last wow, night, so... you're super lame. Yeah, I am. <laughs> We're all super <laughs> lame. <laughs> We're just antisocial. Well, we also lived in a province where for most of this year, it's been like, oh, you're going outside of your house? Here's a $25,000 fine. So, yeah, it's, we were in, like, full-on lockdown. Freedom! Yeah. I can't wait to move to this country. I love this country. <laughs> this country is so great. This country Our loves lives. you. You can take away. I should have just not got a COVID test. Our oh, masks. I can't go home? Oh, that sucks. I guess I'll just stay here at the airport then. That's fine. But you'll never take our makeup. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have a do you have a lot of family? What what are your ties in Canada? Obviously, you're from there, but yeah, like so, both my parents are alive, right? And they're both from Canada, like different sides of Canada, and uh, like I've got family there and stuff, but realistically, nothing. Like I own. I own a house. You can sell a house. So just everything. Yeah, like, but well, nothing. But like really. nothing that I'm not willing to be like, okay, peace out. See you peace, later, mom. Yeah, exactly. You raised me, but I'm done with you now. Yeah, my dad's super stoked. He's like, you're gonna move to the states. That's so awesome. And my mom's sad about it, but whatever. So you've been talking about that forever. Is this gonna be a thing? I hear Texas. Yeah, so are, I'm in the process. No, I'm. I've. The. I better not be just talking. The lawyer has all my money. So. For. Immigration lawyer. Yeah, like this is like legit. I'm moving for sure. Hundred percent. Okay, so what is the what what's the process? The immigration lawyer has your money. So what is that like? It, so basically, I have to get a work visa, and a work visa can be on like an O one, which is um, how like actors and comedians get across, or it can be an E one. And he's just straight out. He's like, "You're not famous enough for an O one." I'm like, "Okay." So it's an E one, and it's just you have to do a certain amount of trade with the U S. That what I sell is media. So as long as I sell a certain amount of media, then they'll accept me. So I'm above that threshold, and then I just have to wait because for of your YouTube channel. Yes. Oh. Yeah, so I just have to wait for the consulate to be like, yeah, yeah, let him in and give me a visa, which is good for five years. And then you have to renew it. And then hopefully by then the channel's big enough, I can get an O one, one which can turn into a green card. And well, hopefully the consulate's not, oh, so this guy is a long play. <laughs> he wants to get in the chat the whole time. Yeah. But, do, yeah. Do you have a girlfriend coming with you? Oh, yeah, Michelle's coming with me. Okay. Yeah. Just checking because, I mean, there's other ways to get green cards. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not allowed to say that out loud, I was told. Never discuss that out loud, I was told. So. Never discuss the fact that you have a girlfriend out loud? No, or? the fact that you can just pump a baby in her and stay when she, uh, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, which is definitely not the plan, U.S. consulate. <laughs> That's definitely <laughs> not what we're planning. Wow. Oh, wait, is, is Michelle American? No, she's Canadian, but no, the but baby. You have an American baby. Ah, uh, yeah. Your, Amer your baby's yeah, an American citizen right. automatically. That's right. And but us Americans don't think like that because you got to be a sneaky rat of a Canadian coming over here pumping a baby out for citizenship. I am a sneaky rat. <laughs> okay, all right. So, like, I do think that's a good plan, but you should at least name the baby after one of the presidents. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, Donald. 
That's a nice ring to it, right? Yeah. So Don. Okay. So Donald. <laughs> Donald. Which, there's so many people that said they were gonna move to Canada if Donald became president. <laughs> hey, switch addresses with me. I'm good with it. I'll switch address. So okay. So what's the president uh, I should like? So his is Donald. I mean, Abraham is pretty cool. That's. I feel like that's very. That's hipster. a cool name. Yeah. That's a cool Abraham. Name. Well, he was like. He was he the twelfth president. Wait, are you, are you, do you not know who? Abraham I know who I'm Lincoln. Lincoln. I'm just trying to figure out what number. What? Oh, I don't know what. I thought I think 14th. Yes, 14th. 14th. Okay, okay. I was in the vicinity. Can who is the president that I have to oh name my kid God, after? Like, that, who do I think you? Should, what president would I have you name your kid yeah. after? Probably Theodore. Woodrow, Theodore, Abraham, mm-hmm. like pretty much any of them. All the old names are cool now. That is true. I got a kid named Garrison. I'm just. Fond That's of, a I, dope name. I'm, yeah. I'm just fond of the national parks. Is what. Mm-hmm. It, Oh yeah. yeah, I like Theodore. That's good. Yep. I don't Teddy. like Donald though. Donald's not good. No, Donald reminds no, me of a duck. I mean, he's actually very old for a living president, but that name is not old enough. He had to go back another hundred. years. My mm-hmm. grandfather's name was Donald. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> My grandfather's name was Alfred, so I think that's out. I know a lot of Dons. I like all the Dons I know. Don Munson, what's up? Don Perignon. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Don Flamenco. Don Juan. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so as long as I do it after a U.S. president, then I'm not a sneaky snake? Yeah, yeah. You'd be According to Garrett, I, I had nothing rat. to do with Let's it. Let's not be giving snakes a bad rap That's here. true. Those rats suck, though. When they bite you, oh, my gosh, take a snake bite over that any day. Any day. All day. It is true. The snake, the rat bites make you bleed a lot, too. They just hurt. They hang on, and then you feel like you have, like, disease in you for a while. Mm. There's like that... You know when you get stabbed really good by a rose thorn, and you're like, oh, it still hurts when I like pinch on it. Like, it's got a little bit of venom in it. Rat bites? No, rose thorn. Oh, rose thorn. Yeah, no, but rat bites, you're like, there's no venom in there. This is just straight, like, solidified piss off your teeth. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Dude, rat bites just suck. Yep. I got mammal a rat bites. bite once through a leather glove, and it was like, why is this happening? All mammal bites feel not good. That's yeah. true. I lost my knuckle to a squirrel through a leather glove. Ugh. Take a snake bite, folks. Well, it's all painted, right? <laughs> I was just going to say, we all have the most disgusting hands. I'm yeah. worried about getting stopped at the airport because of my hands. What even? It looks like I've been yeah. working with C4. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm like. If they do one of those yeah, swabs these, on my hands, you're like, builds. were you doing manual labor? Like, what were you doing exactly? <laughs> I was. Yeah, I know for you sure. Were. Yeah. 100%. Uh, I was were. doing manual labor for six and a half hours as fast as I could. I didn't pee, I didn't drink. <laughs> None of that. Yeah, custom stares you in the eyes. <laughs> like, what's your purpose of this trip? <laughs> like, uh, conference? Don't ask. Conference. That's Building what I said. Things? That's a good one. Yeah, what am I supposed to Did say? Did you say conference? Yeah, I'm like, what am I supposed yes, to say? Yeah. Oh, I'm a YouTuber, and uh, we're, we're making enclosures for reptiles. We're like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so I need a good one. You know, here's the funny thing. I'm really good at coming up with, like, made-up stories. Brian, you were working next to me. Did you hear all my different stories from people like, what are you building? Uh, no, because <laughs> you were outside for about five and a half hours of the six and fifteen. Well, true. That yeah. is true. But the first, the first bit, like everybody asked what it was all about. They saw that big pile of wood that I had there. I told one person I was building a tree house. I told one person <laughs> I used to catch lizards in wood piles, so I'm just gonna put a wood pile. I did in hear the you cage. say that one twice, like several times. You said I believe that one. <laughs> so, well, I believe yeah, that. Yeah, it was one. true. I believed it too. Actually, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I actually looked over and I was like. Super cool, Garrett. Like, I was not <laughs> oh, like Western wild. fence lizards. That's nice. awesome, dude. Like taking nice. it to the roots. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's actually what I did. Not with the wood pile and the fence <laughs> lizards, but that's pretty close. But no, I yeah, I, I so I I've, I've made up a lot of stories. But when you travel and you're wearing like reach out reptile shirt, I got I got my reptilution shirt on here right now. But um, and someone goes, so what do you do for a living? It's always like, oh, here we go. <laughs> what do you say? I I I say I, I breed exotic reptiles. And then you, you, I just try to be simple, but it doesn't work. You can't, no. they, they're always like, give me more. And you're like, well, aren't you going to tell me what you do for a living? They're like, no, I'm an accountant. You tell me what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares about what I do. So, so I, for some reason, my whole life, I've tried to come up with something that is like true, but simple in case I don't want to have the whole conversation. And I've not been able to think of it. So conference, I like that. What what would be the conference answer version for what do you do for a living? I'm a video editor. That's what I tell everybody. 
That's what I tell my neighbors. That's, that's not what I, true for me. Yeah, well, <laughs> my video editor is in the bathroom on a pillow. <laughs> well, because I I used to say content creator, and then that always created a conversation. Content creator. Yeah, because it's like, what's what do you just film yeah. your hands? But just then all of it's it's like so like what you put videos on YouTube, right? So and then I remember that the COVID center like I was getting my shot and like a uh, content creator. What's that mean? I make videos and put them on the internet. <laughs> She's like, people pay you for that. It's like, yeah, my parents are really oh, you proud. You should see the videos. <laughs> yeah. But only if you're over 18. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard of OnlyFans? Uh, so that's, that's, what I, that's what I say. I like having conversations mm. with people on the plane. What do you say? No, I do. What do you say but, if someone like, official asks you? I don't always want to do it. Sometimes I'll have the same conversation three times in a row. That's what I, that's what oh, I like. Oh, I got I'm you. Done. I got you. Well, I don't mind because most people, as we know, are, well, I, sometimes we get jaded to the fact that most people are terrified of snakes. You know, the general public, the majority is like doesn't really want to have anything to do with snakes or reptiles. Thinks they're creepy, thinks they're slimy, thinks they're dangerous, or some kind of misconceived notion about reptiles. So I enjoy helping somebody I'm out of that, that even if I can on the plane with some photos and just talking about it, like <clears throat> helping to realize for some people, for a lot of people, when I tell them that I've sold a snake for, you know, five figures, they're like, whoa. And it's like gives like <laughs> like snakes are worth money. And it gives them that, at least that, even though it's shallow, it's some kind of value that they, they give it. What kind of drugs were sown in the snake? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever asked me that. Although we did have, we have gone to conversations. I will say that I'm pretty sure happened. your five figure sa snake sales were ball pythons. So yes, that's pretty were. impressive. That is really impressive, so, actually. Yeah. Not, not that there aren't ball pythons that price. I just don't think there's a lot of five figure ball pythons being moved around. Well, when people there's find a, out... There's a small number of them, and most of them are going to go to a very select few breeders. So to get a piece of that pie is great. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, I just... I, I mean, I love talking to people about snakes on the, on the plane. <laughs> it's always a good... Cause some, some people, even the like, ladies that are like totally freaked out by it, they're like, so freaked out, they're intrigued. Like... Yeah. Sometimes some of the ladies, I feel like they right just, after they ask you, you don't have one with you, do you? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. That is a question. That is definitely a question. Sometimes I feel like some of the ladies like are almost enjoying putting on a show of being like freaked out, just like, it's like yeah. oh, it's free. I'm freaking out. Oh no. This it's almost trendy thing. too, eh? It's like trendy to be afraid of snakes. It seems like as well. Or, or of anything. Yeah. People like brag about it almost. Like, oh, I would, I would, I would, I would kill that. It's like, okay, that's really cool. Like, that's a cool thing to say. I'm so glad you told me that. <laughs> You know, I went through a period in my life, I was a little bit, like, angry at people with the whole snake killing thing after a while. It was when I lived in Southern California. Rattlesnakes everywhere. Three times a week, someone's showing you pictures of a rattlesnake with its head cut off. So I found pictures of dead puppies, and I put them in an album on my phone. And I was like, oh, man, I got one for you. Check this one out. Beat that bastard's head in with a shovel. Man. And I was like, what? Oh. And I'm like, well, I just told you I like snakes. This is the context of the conversation. Like, what are you into? What that kind of stuff? And I say, I love snakes. And then they, the first thing they say is, I killed one. <laughs> and then they tell you all the details. So I, I assume most people like puppies. So then I show them pictures of dead puppies. I, didn't, I don't do this anymore, but when I was young and <laughs> angry, I would show people these pictures, like just random internet pictures of dead puppies all mutilated and be like, I did that. So Shot you're done. Bam, bam, bam. No more puppy under my porch. Ah. So you're really popular is what you're saying? No, I just got so sick of <laughs> Definitely it. Definitely not. I just got so sick of it that I was like, guys, I said I like them, and you're telling me how you mutilate them for no reason. I'll like, tell you what, though, dude. Like, the word savage is so overused, but that is such a savage thing to do. <laughs> I just got, you know, it's like I'm, I'm big on the standard replies. That's why I'm asking you, what should I say? Because, like, the, the YouTube thing, like, if... You know, I could say, like, I guess, like, I'm a YouTuber, I guess. But that starts so a conversation, a too. I guess. So you're a farmer. Ooh, that's smart. You don't look like a farmer, though. That would work. Oh, yes, he does. Did you see my cage? <laughs> that looks like I a farmer. I literally built a farm inside my cage. Like, <laughs> this is the inside of a farm shed. Dude, just say you're a farmer. That's a good... I can I can go with that. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I was, I was recently looking up legislation, and in Pen the state of Pennsylvania... There is a, an exemption for child labor laws if you're a farmer. There's a different set really? of rules for farm kids. Different set of rules. Would, yeah. you, would you probably fall under, like, would you actually be legally well, a farmer? I could argue the point that I am. I mean, definitely that is what we do. But I don't know if there's some kind of, like, um, 
you know, there's like farm associations. Maybe they want to see you be a member of one of those or whatever. So I don't know. But you know my kids. My kids, especially Riley. She's like, I want to make money. What do you got for me? And so she said that during the summer we, we went through several um, like teenagers that would come in and stuff like work permits and all that kind of stuff and make money. And she's like, well, I want to make money. And you know I can do a better job than them. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so like I used to let her work for me or something. And I'd take her out to ice cream or something. And she's like, minimum wage is seven twenty five an hour. You know what I mean? And my daughter's eight. So, so I'm like, that's almost as, as old as you are, like how much you make. You know what I mean? So anyway, we had this whole conversation. And I talked about it. And, you know, she looked it up and said, nope, if you're a farmer then, or if you're doing uh, domestic, like house chores, you can pay kids for it. So there's a different set of rules. It has to be during school hours. So like, and they define it from 7 a.m. till one after, one hour after the, the school is out and the farmer has to directly pay the kids. So it makes sense because there's a lot of rural farmland and stuff in Pennsylvania and a lot of kids go to work at the local farm. You know, I mean, all my cousins did that when they were kids and stuff like that. Just farm hands bucking hay, doing whatever, you know. I mean, there's a lot of farms in California. A lot of people don't realize that. That. Yeah, but okay, so th there are, but I feel like the far most of the farming done in Pennsylvania is the same way it was done a hundred years ago. Some of the farms in California are like that. Yeah, but but a lot of the farms are like super mega machines now in California. Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, producing like, most of the nation's produce. So. Right. Yeah. And Industrial so like farming. All the trees have a barcode on them and that kind of thing. So. Wait, what is that a real thing? Oh yeah, California like almonds and and all that kind of stuff. That trees have the barcode and they, it's like Repti scan. You scan it and for, I had no this idea. one needs fertilizer and wow. Yep, it's a whole deal. You have to look it up. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, if you drive from Southern California to Northern California going up the five, it's just farm farm lines. the whole way. But they're mega farms. Yeah, mega big farms. huge pasture, like big, factory huge, farms stuff. type thing. Not factory. It's all out. No, it's all outside. We just run like a factory. Probably, yeah, more efficient, I would say. For well, sure. Like yeah. the tractors are all run; they're they're self driving, run by GPS and stuff like that. That's wild. That's... All of the all of the the machines are like robotic, so like the ones that like shake the trees and catch the fruits, because you guys have a lot of fruit trees and stuff like that. All all of those are like driverless now. Not all, but on those big farms they are, because the smaller family farms have gotten purchased up because they're very profitable. And so they've all kind of got bought up by big people at some point when they're getting handed usually from one generation to the next or there's an economic issue, then the mega farms kind of buy everybody up. I didn't know that was a thing. Like, I come from, a, like, my city is called the Garden City. Like, I, it's like all farms. It's, it's mostly flowers and stuff, but I've never seen anything like that. That's wild. You, know, you can yeah. just, like, have a barcode and have, like, these GPS tractors and stuff. That's yeah, pretty cool. Man, that is cool. cool. Never heard anything like that before. You yeah. can't tell it from the road. It just looks like farmland. Just rows but, of trees. Yeah. But, yeah, that's definitely yeah. a little higher tech these days. Uh, the reason I brought up farmer, I mean, because my dad calls me out all the time. He's like, hey, you're a he's, he's a snake farmer. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it's true. The, the only problem is it, it does break down as soon as they're like, oh, what do you farm? Yeah, damn it. Snakes? <laughs> that conversation. They probably think you're being a sarcastic dick. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it, though, farming. You say animals. Yeah. I've raised livestock. And that's very much like a I don't want to talk to you answer. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm okay with that too. But it's also, better than showing them dead puppies. If you said, like, if someone said to you, what do you do for work and you're like animals, that could also mean donkey shows too. So, like, you're really kind of opening up. It could be, I mean, a lot of things, you know? Kelly, give me a guy's name too. Dude, does this whiskey have a hint of like pink in it or am I It's true? very, yeah, it's very red, rose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. It's super good. I've never really has, seen a whiskey this color. It has like exactly. uh, flowers on the. Uh, I was just I just know if I was, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't seeing things over here like pink elephants no. and stuff. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, it is very good, and of bourbons, this is like a very good one, I think. Yeah, the four. This is only the second four grain I've ever had. It's uh, it's enjoyable. I don't know if I've ever tried a four grain like that before, but I mean, it's they call it a bourbon, right? So it has to be mostly corn. It is. Which is like, it does taste kind of sweet, but not like overbearing, you know? Yeah. Except the what do you think about Canadian whiskey? 
<laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> I, I would like to okay. try. Before you give one. me your opinion, what is the brand that comes to mind? What is the whiskey that comes to mind when um, I say like Canadian whiskey? Well, Crown Royal. Yeah, Crown Royal is obviously like yeah, one of the I big know. ones that comes out of Canada that a lot of people know. Um, uh, club, Mist uh, Club? Club? Uh, Canadian Club? Yeah, Canadian Club. And uh, oh, what is another one that we had uh, recently? It was... It was uh, oh, I'm drawing a rock. It's actually some, the funny thing is it's something Buffalo Trace sends up to Canada, and then they make it. It, comes, it has a little like moose on top. Caribou Crossing. Oh, okay. Caribou yeah. Crossing. That's actually like Blanton's, <clears throat> but sent up to Canada. It's like Canadian Blanton's. Are you serious? Basically, I didn't know that. I, I love so. Blanton's, and we can't find it. Ever. I'm pretty sure that Car- Caribou Crossing is the same mash bill of Blanton's and. Buffalo Trace just sends that spirit up to Canada. And okay, Canada so Caribou Crossing, they can't call it a rye then, which is why it's not called a rye. Because it's not. Right, but I always thought, because I, I see it under the Canadian whiskey section, everything I see Canadian whiskey, I always assume that it's going to be a rye, but it's so not. I think that the, that the ryes are something that Canada actually might do pretty well. Yeah, it is something we do really well. Yeah, and I have not had, I've had sourced ryes from Canada, like Whistle now, Pig sources from Canada. And uh, some things like that. But I haven't had a whiskey that was Canadian where I was like, ooh, this is good. Not yet, at least. It's uh, Rye is, like, very spicy. Like, so, and in my opinion, anyway, like, what I taste of it. Like, bourbon always has, like, this sweetness to it. Yeah, the corn. Yeah. and But rye is, like, spicy. Yeah. I like it. And so there's this one. It's Canadian Club 100% rye. It's like uh, corn bread versus rye bread. Right. 100% rye? 100% rye. Yeah, the Whistle Pig was 100% yeah. rye, actually. And uh, it? mm-hmm. it's the cheapest bottle on the shelf. And it is as good as any Canadian whiskey I've ever had. It's 28 bucks. The whistle pig we had was 100% rye. Yeah. Wow. And it was their answer because so Crown Royal made what it's called a Northern Harvest. And it won Jim Marie's Whiskey Bible in 2016 as the best whiskey in the world. And it's 38 bucks a bottle. And right beside it every time is always that 100% rye. It, is, it blows the doors off of it. And it's 10 bucks cheaper. So it, next time you come up to Canada, I will hand deliver you a bottle. Because it is a beautiful thing. I always have it in the cupboard, always. Yeah, I'd like to have a, a Canadian whiskey that I might like that's not sourced through somewhere in America. I don't, I think it's like Manitoba, I think, is a distillery. But it's great. It is very good. I, I'm open to... I'll, I'll, I will try any whiskey. But if I haven't had a whiskey before, I will try it. I don't care what if it's Canadian, if it's Italian, if it's wherever that whiskey comes from. Do Italians these, make whiskey? Oh, these yeah. drink sponsorships really? mm-hmm. are making this show into like searchable as booze now. <laughs> yeah, searchable as searchable yeah. as bourbon. No, no. The, if you remember, the title of the podcast is, means that it's simply searchable as reptiles because that's the glue that brings us together to have these conversations. They don't revolve around reptiles. They just revolve around the fact that we happen True. to be. I'm not necessarily trying to get back. What do you think I, about this one? Oh, I love it. This is great. Where did your glass go? It's right here. Oh, I see. I see. I, I, I Glasgow, that's so scotch, far. which is still whiskey, technically. What did I say? Glasgow. Oh, Glasgow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I made the comedian laugh. That's good. That's good. That good. It was funnier, too, because I didn't get it the first time. <laughs> the joke's always funny if you have to explain it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a rule of comedy. <laughs> Those are the best jokes. <laughs> wait, wait, run that one more me again. <laughs> yeah, one more time. <laughs> Say same delivery though. Put the same delivery on it. Put okay, the same which on. if you guys had to honestly place yourself in the competition today, like as far as we vote were in count, the competition today. If you had to place yourself, <laughs> oh, between first like, through tenth, like what are our predictions? What is your prediction? <clears throat> It there's, that's hard because I, I know that's why I asked. It, it would be a completely different. Uh, you know, Jessica was saying um, that uh, Je- Jessica's animal friends right. was saying that this would be a completely different competition if the cage builds were anonymous. Yes, and you didn't see who built what. And I would say you would still know some of them. For example, Dave's who had a large picture of himself printed <laughs> inside of his cage. <laughs> <clears throat> You'd probably be able to guess that one. <laughs> yeah, that would but be. You might obvious. be able to guess Clint's because he has a big dinosaur buried in the bottom of it. But um, I bet sh- you my audience would think that was mine. You think so? I talk about That's dinosaurs a lot. Not I as bet much you as Clint. Everybody would be able to pick out yours too, almost as easily as Dave's, if they knew you and your style. I guess. You think so? Yeah, you with your with your palette wood. Oh, mm-hmm. me? I thought you meant him. No. Yeah. Oh no. You. 
Mine doesn't look like oh, anything. Yeah, yeah, no, if they knew anything about me, they would. But that, like I said, nobody watches my channel. That's why everyone was so surprised with what I did. I was like, you don't watch anything I do. This is all I do on my channel. Right. I know it's a hard question, but I still want to know where you guys would play, well, predict your placement to be. Well, I, I, so I'm just kind of like setting for it that there, there are more things in the play than the build itself. Oh, absolutely. And so that makes it a very difficult question to answer. Because if they were anonymous and you didn't know what they were, you would just pick simply your favorite build. Mm -hmm. But instead of that, there are going to be people who pick someone because they feel bad for them. Like everyone's saying, please vote for Carrot. Poor guy sweated his hey, ass off. I all said day. that, yeah. I said I was the first person to say that because I was the, the first, first person, person to interview. <laughs> and and is because I, I was just impressed with all of it. I was impressed with the idea. I was impressed with the delivery of said idea. And then. You know, the, th the thing with your grandpa, even though I didn't hear that till after, that, like, adds to it even after the fact. Mm -hmm. And then I was also impressed with how you ha managed to complete it, like, within seconds of that was, time. That was so <laughs> It was like, if I watched it on a show, if I watched that and I wasn't part of this, I would think that was done Staged. for... Yeah, yes. it was yeah. very dramatic. Yes. The, especially because mine was the cage that I did all of my build outside the building. Mm -hmm. Because I was working with power tools and everyone's trying to film stuff. So I was like, you know what? Let's grab all the stuff and go outside. So, but I didn't take my cage with me. So the cage <laughs> sat there on the table, empty. It was a running the joke. Entire, and I, I really am actually interested to, to watch back everyone's videos because I want to see the reactions to like, I think half of the people were done before I put anything in my cage. You came in, put like cut pieces of wood in to and check the I fit, took, them took them back out, <laughs> cage right. empty again. <laughs> so everyone's <laughs> like, is Garrett even competing today? Like what's going on? Cause no one saw me the whole day. But, um, but anyway, no, I, I don't know that I can answer because I think some of it is gonna be, like you were, I think in the comment section, Adam, you were the, the most mm -hmm. named, Adam is going to win this competition. You know, it's funny because all the reasoning was so – like, not silly, but, like, I don't do videos like that. Like, I don't make enclosures. I was wondering, so, like, why do you think that the reasoning is? Well, I think because I'm an advocate of bigger caging and the cages that I do, they're simplistic and, like, they're easy and anyone can make them. But they're nice. But, but they're good for the animal, uh, in my opinion, I think. So I think that's what it was. But also I think it's because – I think everybody who watches my channel also watches Snake Discovery's channel. So I think I've got the biggest cross. Crossover. Right, of anybody else's channel. Yeah. So I think that if I do place, then it's because of my channel's popularity. Because if I had to place... Go ahead. Sorry. If I had to place myself based on the merit of the enclosure, I would probably put myself between eighth and dead last. But I think because it's going to be a popularity contest, I think that I... You might even gain a couple notches. I'm, yeah, I might come top five because, like, I just... And it's, it's not like a... Oh, you mean, like, eighth from the bottom and last. This way, yeah, like, I might come, like... I don't think so. I, I think you were, you were... There was a lot of really good builds, and I think you were at least solidly in the middle and up. Well, I think it was, like... I mean? I th I, there was nothing to set it apart, I think. Because, like, with yours, yeah, it was uh, yours, obviously. I think Jessica's was very intricate. Um, there's a few of them that were, like, well, obviously yours with the mushrooms, right? So I think that there was a lot that were... themes or something. Yeah, and mine was just kind of, like, something that I didn't really think of anything. The one thing that I had to set it apart was the cool um, Canadian flag on the cork board thing that I was going to put in the background. But I, it's on my kitchen it. table. Yeah, yeah so... Yeah, yeah I, I... Yeah, I don't think that... On the merit, I would deserve, but I think if it was just like a competition of which is the best for the species, then it would be high. Like I, I don't know. I just made it like that. I made it in mind. I don't care if I win. I made it so that whoever gets it when it's raffled off, it's very functional for them, and they're gonna really enjoy having it. So. Sure, sure. So stop deflecting. Where do you think you're gonna come in terms of the rankings? Yeah. Well, no. I. I. Uh, where do I? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the popularity on this channel at all. Exactly. I know, but I also... Now, now there, there are the two things I have going for me, one I think was the dramatic effect. I was very much the underdog, especially with the complexity of the build, how demanding of a build that was. I worked really hard today. In six and hours. I'm, and I'm not inefficient. 
when it comes to that kind of thing. I'm pretty stinking quick if you saw me slap together those stone walls that I'd never even done before. But, um, so I worked very, very hard. So um, either, people are either gonna feel bad for me, like as, a, as an underdog kinda wanna do it, or just be like, you know what, that was the most original. And, and vote for me that way. So I think I'll place well. I think I'd probably get the top three somewhere. You know, and then where that shakes out, I think has probably to do with popularity. So I guess I, 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 if I had to guess, I'd say I'd probably get number three. And it would be because of popularity. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I don't know that, I'm not saying that I, I deserve the top spot outside of well, that. Well, everyone either. else is saying that, though. But so. there's, yeah, a, I think on, on there's original, a lot on originality of Originality really and good story, games. I think that it was the top. Yes. Yeah, but, but that's the thing. So the people who are voting for it, it's not us voting for it. It's not Ed and Emily voting for it. It's the audience. Mm -hmm. And so some people are going to say, oh, I love the story. Some people are going to say, oh, I love the originality. Some people are going to say, oh, I love the builder. Some people are going to say, oh, I love leopard geckos. I'm going to pick the leopard gecko one. You know, mm. people have all kinds of criteria, and that really makes it impossible to predict. Yeah, I think people will die for a story like that, though. Right? Yeah. Don't you? I think I, that, and even, like, the photo finish at the end. Well, my grandfather did. Yeah, that is true. That is a good <laughs> point. That is, that is true. I, I mean. I hope you put his name on the plaque when you win. <laughs> his initials are carved in some of the tools. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that was, I don't know, I personally think that if I was voting on merit and just, like, the popularity thing of, like, the story, yeah, I think you win hands down, I think. Oh, you have to answer your own question, though. Oh, um, I mean, I always think my farts smell good. <laughs> <laughs> and I... <laughs> I had, I had the All only, the mushroom advocates will love your cage. Yeah, I mean, it was inspired by the invitation and then the first person to tag me in the fact that there was a thing happening was the person that donated those mushrooms from the, the oh, yeah. Netherlands. Yeah, they, they tagged me and a couple of the people um, mm. saying, oh, I'm donating these to the Snake Discovery Build. Also, people are going to be there. And they, I think they just tagged me and Tyler Ruggie, and that's how I knew Tyler was coming. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I was like, oh, those are sweet. Now, light how up, long, light up how mushrooms. long did you know about this? Or, like, when did you get your invite? Like, a, a week and a half, maybe? A week and a half ago? Before the thing, something like that. Maybe oh, it was a couple okay. weeks, I don't know. Okay. Um... I'd have to look in my phone, I guess, to give you a, a true answer. But I, it, was something, it felt like it was a week and a half, two weeks. That doesn't mean anything as far as <laughs> time works for me. Because I, I thought it was 2022 for a couple of weeks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just for real. Uh, I thought that it was cool that I did have the only species, you know, I had the only animal there. Yeah, that was fun. That is, yes. So, so, so his see. bring from home item was the snake to go with the cage. And it was a beautiful coastal carp. Yeah, with and a very well lineaged. Yeah, from Travis. From Travis, yeah, because he's got like you know grandparents and great grandparents lineage back on those. And uh, yeah, so I thought that was cool, and then uh, the mushroom theme I thought was cool too, and then it was just all like, but that's just my own thoughts on it, you know. Like you have to come to play with all of the things that you mentioned, which are you know people are watching that mm. might have never have no idea who I am, and then you know I, I don't <clears throat> always come across so well either. So. <laughs> It's like, well, you that's, actually yeah, it's kind of, I don't always, Adam. I don't always come across so well. Sometimes if I have time to edit and really? I don't polish know. my story, then it comes across pretty well. But sometimes I, I think that I just, yeah, those turds. Like I said, the farts, they smell great. But I think your farts smell great, too. <laughs> I appreciate you, bro. I really I, do, man. I know him better than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'd I would I'd like to think that I'd be up in the... the top five i'd like to think that that was possible especially for being you know bringing the only you know, the only person that actually brought an animal that's going to yeah. go with the enclosure i thought that was set, sets it apart you actually had some pretty cool like i don't know if you remember but my thing was this one was very like feng shui and then i heard you saying later like you incorporated the rule of thirds mm -hmm. so a lot of like aesthetic design elements that are maybe not immediately noticeable but they definitely give you like Remember when you picked your favorite enclosure on my video at Brian Barchek's place, and it was about the yeah, it was about the, about the, the, the rule of thirds, about the Fibonacci sequence. Yes, it was all sequence, yes. about 
you how know it what fit I mean? right so, into place. Yes, that's that's true. And that was a really nice, small, obscure cage in the corner of the shop, but it made you stop and look because of that. So because it's something so you that get a lot of that naturally mm-hmm. grabs people. It's like that's why the rule of thirds works. That's why it's called the golden ratio. So I don't know if people will get that in a video necessarily with the way cuts are and stuff like that. But I think whoever ends up with that cage in their home is gonna be like, yeah. Nice. I know. I kind of want to end up with that cage in my home. That's why I'm going to start <laughs> building cages like that in my home. I think, but I think, like, I don't know. Could we all agree that no matter who wins, they deserve to win because they're all so good? Yes. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yes. Every single enclosure there was looking really great. Sure. Um, yeah. Although I will say that if, if Dave's enclosure happens to win, then Annie should be getting the credit for it. Yes. <laughs> she did probably 90% of the work. Yeah. Oh, man. They were yeah. all so good. And I'm not just saying that to be like a kiss ass. Like, all of them. Like, there was not one that I was like, eh. They were all, if if you put all of them standalone without everyone else's, it would be like, yeah, that's that amazing. Great. Like, it's a yeah. piece of art. All of them were art. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah so, well, that, and the thing about it is they were good for different reasons. That's why mm, it's so hard to stack them up. The variety. Because you can't say, like, we weren't all doing the same thing and did it well at different, you know what I'm mm. saying? Like, Everybody had. They were first of all. They were picking different species. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. And Did then anyone do the had same? There, there were two for leopard geckos. Uh, well, yeah. I'm not saying everyone had a different species. I'm just saying we could pick any species we want. Mm-hmm. So there were a lot of different bents on it. I loved that. I mean, when you look at the pile of materials they gave us, it's very. They're beautiful, but they're kind of like standard reptile industry, you know, materials. Mm-hmm. And then we ended up with cages that were like desert cages and cages that were jungle cages. Some of them had, uh, like uh, Tyler's, had huge stone elements in mm-hmm. it. And it was very heavy. Uh, you know, it was a very like heavy-handed cage. Um, and Els was like that too, right next to it. Not with as big as stones, but she had these like deep cave elements and stuff. And so it, it had like a ton of depth to it. And then other ones, like uh, Hunter's, was super open mm-hmm. yes. and it was like clean and like uh so instead of being heavy it was like i don't know what's the opposite like it's like dainty or minimalistic uh, almost yeah kind of like minimalistic but but elegant yes that's a great I'm yes looking for. yeah so he did and you could see like the background he did was very cool the colors in his case because he had this like fiery red stone background and then these like bright orange and green plants accent accenting it on the sides and so the color elements were cool and then he you know he put like uh coconut fiber on the the sides Mm -hmm. because he's like i'm not doing that part you know what i mean and but it it looked good and the cool thing is it's for leopard gecko they're gonna love they can climb that whole thing because it's coconut fiber so it's exceedingly practical and he's 15 which is the most like Oh, yeah. You, well, okay, so that's another reason why someone could win. That guy's 15 mm-hmm. competing against adult professionals. And his speech was unreal, too. His selling, I, like, I think I missed it. it. It was His thing was like, and because I'm 15 and I want to be an inspiration for younger generations, and I'm like, oh, okay, bro, that's you got my beautiful. vote. All right, okay. Yeah. He said, and I love that kid. That was it, The thing is, too, like with the whole experience, and I know you guys have met like all other YouTubers and stuff, but this is the first time I've ever met anybody ever. And it was like it was very weird. Like I thought it would be like a competitive thing, but oh, it wasn't competitive know. at all. I didn't no. feel a competition. You need to go to a reptile <clears throat> show, bro. You don't even know. Yeah, it, it was like the. Like he's that. been to reptile shows. Well, yeah, but Canadian Nine ones. Years. Like I've never. Yeah, because I've never. Not you. You have to get a a big enough show. Not I'm not dogging the Canadian shows, and I haven't even been to one. So I well, he went do to that CRBE. Anyway. Yeah. That's, so yeah, but yeah, also that's a pretty big show. that was a different because I wasn't in then. I had two thousand subscribers. No one knew who I was. Dave didn't talk to me, right? So like I remember <laughs> well, like you know you know he talks hey, to you Dave. Now. Right. That's Dave. Right. So but I, it was, he was in a rush. Like I, he wasn't like snob, but like no one knew who I was, and I didn't like know who a lot of those guys were. Right. So to like meet all these people and you're on all in the same playing field. It wasn't like a jockeying thing. Because, like, in comedy, that's how it is. Every, like, oh, well, I've been on this, and this is my credit, and I've been on JFL. So it's like this jockeying thing. Well, with this, it wasn't like that at all. So coming from the comedy world to do this, it was – I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe how, like – there There is a little bit of that when you – once you break it down to niches, mm-hmm. right? So if you talk to ball python breeders, you'll get that. If you talk to – you know what I mean? Like, if you get the – but at mm-hmm. the same time, like – it's very petty, and we all know it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when something real goes down, 
everybody's right there. Well, that's what I see it yeah. in like uh, communities, like on Facebook and stuff. And I see like, man, especially the Canadian ones. But with this, it was everyone was super cool. Like no one cares about subscriber count. Everyone's the same. <clears throat> yeah, it was like it was very unexpected, but like in a very positive sort of way. I would say, <coughs> I would say this: if you place your sense of of personal value in your YouTube subscriber count. <laughs> You're you're Sad. missing <laughs> you're missing the point yes. of life. Yes. And and I think everybody they brought there today were good people and nobody mm. was missing the point. Oh, I totally agree. I think it was like the best group of people and all the people that I saw that were invited that couldn't go, those were all awesome people too. So they who, all, who was that? I, Catalia I, was one, M Zotic was another one. There was another one too. Okay. But yeah, all of them, <clears throat> like, everyone was, like, a salt-of-the-earth type of, like, great person. So, and Costco was there. And uh, I just think that all of us were... <laughs> I know, I, I always make salt-of-the-earth lists. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was putting you on the outside. I know what he was doing. He did it earlier. <laughs> yeah. I do it because I know that you can take it. No, that's right. Offended. Oh, yeah, I can take it. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. It was, like, a gr- good group of people, and it was, like, not competitive, which is... I mean, it was, like, competitive, but, like, in a fun way. It wasn't, like, uh, I'm going to steal, like, the yeah. clues. No, it and... totally was. I, I wasn't knowing to expect either. Like, I knew I was going to be, you know, chill and doing whatever I was doing mm. in my mushroom life. But <laughs> but uh, it was. Everybody was just having fun. Like, I, I didn't feel any, like, weirdness at all from any of the people that were there, really. It was just, like, all good. Like, we're just hanging out. We're going to build these enclosures, have a blast. We're going to run around doing the... It, we didn't even talk about this part. The, to get first choice of the pieces yeah. and split us into the two teams of five. And we do the trivia and then... Once we won the trivia, they get the head start to run around and do a little scavenger hunt around the shop. And that part, I felt like we were all five years old, running around <laughs> like maniacs yeah, looking for the sure. capture of the flag. It was so fun, dude. I was just like, that was, when I knew that part was happening, I, I could, didn't imagine that it was going to be as awesome that, as that moment was. Just like everybody's running like mad. Like it's one of those times it's like nobody crashed into each other but nobody was either actually paying attention to whether or not they were going to crash into each other or not. <laughs> it just didn't happen. <laughs> it just didn't happen. Because and credit, credit to them hosting that because they did a really good job with the trivia questions they asked us. Yeah. And then they did a really good job with the scavenger hunt clues. You had to read it and be like, wait, what does this mean for a second? And they're like, Okay, I have an idea. Let's try it. You know what oh, I mean? What happened in the bathroom? Because I we because we we're like, oh, it must be yeah. in the changing room. And yeah, then we yeah. went in there. I thought we didn't find it, but then you guys like dove deeper somehow. You and yeah, I found it. So there was uh, well, first of all, yeah, it said something about where the predator lurks. You know what I mean? Changing and then, and then something about changing, changing the table. Baby, the changing table. And the baby's not right. afraid. Or didn't the say changing table. It did say changing table. Yeah, it did say changing table. table. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, we figured maybe one of those pop down changing right. tables mm-hmm. you see in the bathroom. Everyone ran in the men's room. I ran in the women's room because I was like, it's not going to be in the men's room. So, so I ran in the women's room. I'm like, knock, knock, anybody in here? I'm coming in. So I ran in the, in the, the women's room. I look all over the changing table. I'm like, no, it's not there. And everyone started to leave. Yeah. And I looked back at the changing table and up above it on the ceiling was like a bust of a Tyrannosaurus Rex kind of like the deer head mount or whatever but it was way up above it like two two three feet above it so if you didn't look up when you got to the changing table you didn't see it and i saw it there and i was like oh i got it you know and here it is so we found it but that's what that was i thought it was interesting that they put all the clues for both teams in the same spots yeah so you could just kind of play follow the leader if you chose to yeah well i I, there's a different order i think they're in a different order, but I was definitely paying attention to the places people were going. Yeah, because because it doesn't matter what order you collect them. I remember right? thinking, so, oh, Clint just came in from outside. So as soon as I get a Clint, uh, you know, a, a hint about a Clint, a hint about <laughs> outside, that's where I'm going. Yeah. It was very encouraging too, like it, the whole thing, and then it was the, that was the competitive part. But even then, it wasn't like a cutthroat thing. And no. those those puzzles were awesome. They were the chameleons. It was fun doing the team the build puzzles on it were too. Hard. Like, mm. The clues were challenging, and the trivia. I think there was like three questions where they stumped all, all ten of us. Of us. Yeah. yeah, ten like the Apodites, whatever. I thought Apodites. Aspidites, yeah. yeah, we were. That was just a. We all just had a just brain like, fart yeah, moment on that one. Yeah. The, the question for you listeners, they said, uh, uh, okay, you know, there are 
there are only two species within Aspidites. What are they and what makes them different from everything else? And, and we were all thinking it was some venomous yep. snake. I was like, mm-hmm. I like, is that the European adder? And I think Clint thought it was, uh, what did he say it was? Elephant trunk snakes. No, 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 no. That's what they said they were going to build their cage for. That's <laughs> what I said. All of us. <laughs> That's what I said I was going to build my cage for. Yeah, no. They, he yeah, thought we it, all copied you. He thought it was uh, like a hinge fang or old world viper. I think maybe like mm. a death adder or something like that. Oh, I thought yeah. you brought up death adder. You said European and then he said death adder, right? Yeah. So, and they're like, no, it's walmas and blackheads. And they're like, <laughs> <morons>. <laughs> the other one was, what is the, what is the like scientific term for, for, you know, a shed, a stuck shed, basically. And we're like, oh, stuck shed, dry shed. I don't know. So, yeah, we're all throwing around industry terms. And you know, that's when you realize like, we're such idiots. <laughs> like, it was, uh, do not know. What dis Dixis. Dis X. Dis- Dix- 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 well, no, Ecdysis is, shed- is shedding. Right. See, we're all morons. Dix- <laughs> they, I think yeah. they did an amazing job with the entire thing to put it together. I think, too, like the people who we understand because we make videos, but I don't think people are going to understand like that was so much work for them to put that together. Oh, yeah. To get all the sponsors, to get everything together, to get all the, like, and they had to build all those enclosures, right? To put them all together. They had to put them all together. They only got five of them even sealed. Half right. Of That's why you guys were extra sealed. 15 minutes to actually mm-hmm. make it in time. <laughs> yeah, they're like, we'll give you an extra 15 minutes because you had to, you know, do the caulking on your own cage. <laughs> and where everyone's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. That's just going to make grace. a difference. And I was like, <laughs> 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 I was super happy because I, I sealed, like, everyone ran over to the side where they were already caulked because they mm-hmm. wanted to start decorating. And I'm like, it's gonna take me like two minutes to seal this cage, mm-hmm. and, I'm gonna and you might need minutes. it. Yeah, and, and that's you needed why it. I, I don't. Well, I knew I needed it too. Do you remember in the beginning when they're like, "Okay, so you got six hours," and I was like, "Wait, is it six hours or is it until six o'clock?" Because it's eleven thirty-three right now. <laughs> so I was very much in my brain calculating it. Yeah, it was that was hard. Yeah, fun. God, man. that was a hard cage to build. In that that super of time. fun. Yeah, you're... all of us are like, that was so much fun. And Garrett's like, I am so oh, dead. I, was freaking, <laughs> I, was so... I drank. I I sat there because I didn't even drink all day. So like, once I got back into the building, I just started chugging stuff out of mm-hmm. the freezer. I think I drank. I was like, did I hear something about Gatorade? <laughs> yeah, I, you were looking right at it. I'm like, this dude is so dehydrated. Be Gatorade <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> if it is a snake, it bit me. But I drank like 12 drinks and haven't taken a leak. You know what I mean? It was just like... <laughs> well, you came in and you were like glistening. You're just like oh, so man. sweaty. I was drenched in sweat because they have a, a greenhouse outside and that's where they said I could build. Yeah, I it said, must have been an old greenhouse. I asked if that's I could build in the zoo. Mm-hmm. I said, can I build in like the zoo section? Because I just wanted to get out of the room with my power tools to not mess up everybody's audio, right? And they're like, well, that, that sounds really messy. So yeah. go ahead and build outside in the greenhouse. And I'm like, oh, cool. Outside in the parking lot. But not the regular paved part. The paved part that's covered with the clear thing. so that the It's, it's a greenhouse. It's yes. a greenhouse. And it's like 90 degrees and it 70% was, percent it humidity. Was so <laughs> hot. It was so much hotter here than it is in Pittsburgh right now. By like 20 degrees. I was really dying. Oh yeah, it's nice in Pittsburgh right now. Oh man, it's but... hotter at home than it is here. Good <laughs> really? God, it's so What's hot. Wrong with you guys? Yeah, well, <laughs> I guess it's, we have the same climate in the winter though. Basically, not you though. No. Well, you're just a little bit north of us. I think you get slightly longer season. Yeah, because I even used to work an hour south of where, like, straight south of where I live, mm-hmm. and it was amazing. Like at work, all the trees leaves are changing colors and you drive back home you're like everything's still green it's still summer for a little bit longer you know? hey so uh, i gotta give a shout out to aurora who helped me build my enclosure today local minnesotan and also she proposed our uh diving deep in the shallow end for this we, we always do okay adam we every episode that we've done to date we have one segment. One that we segment. Never stuck to. That we've never stuck Yeah, we had a whole bunch of segments. Remember when we have a segment like, see if we could, if it was it was like, like if we could do drawing? We never did it. We were like, no, see who can draw the best. The music like, thing, yeah. There was a music thing. There was uh, there was all these different segments that I we guess. like had. And the only one that we've stuck to is called Diving Deep in the Shallow End. Which is kind of our whole show anyway. That's okay. true. And somebody just proposes a topic that's supposed to be kind of, you know, shallow. And then 
we would just take take it and dive deep. I think one of our first one was like, why does the toast always fall butter side down? I think that was like one of the first ones and mm-hmm. things things of that nature. One of them, Thomas proposed one of them, which was uh, what what makes trees like. Have you ever seen how a sexual some tree? Trees or how come are some trees are? Or something yeah, like yeah, something like that. Like, how come some, some trees, trees are sexual? What? Are what was your question, Thomas? Are you still in the pillow there? You might have headphones on. What, what was your actual tree question? Do you remember it? Yes. What is the most sexually attractive type of tree? Yes. What was the most sexually attractive species of tree or type How of tree? How does... Or just tree. What was the yeah. thought process when you thought about uh, that question? He was looking out no, the window no. at trees so the and he's 21 years old. He goes, we <laughs> take a question. Okay, okay Tom, Thomas, if you're going to explain it, you're going to have to come talk into a mic. <laughs> yeah, this is an important question I need an answer. Yeah, you got yeah, you got oh, this one coming. Come on over. Oh, yeah, whatever. Sorry. Yeah, if you're on Garrett's tip, it's all good. <laughs> all right. So if you didn't listen to Garrett's story in the Sexual Trees podcast, let me give you the context. So I had a couple <laughs> drinks, but not anything crazy like Gary said. But anyway, so we were driving down the street. And I don't goes, believe you. We have a thing on our podcast where we go really, we overthink a very simple question or dumb question. It's called diving deep in the shallow end. So I was like, all right, I'm going to think of the most random question ever because we've been playing the question game on our road trip. And so I was like, what is the first thing that pops in my mind just out of nowhere? And I was sitting there looking out at these beautiful trees and I was like, what is the most sexually attractive tree? He just looks at me and is like, like what you asked for a random question dude like, <laughs> how much more random does it get like i could i could keep fair thinking enough, for a minute i was hey, Garrett, looking at a tree and i was feeling wood Garrett, is, is thomas me. coming to uh arizona uh I maybe actually think that, that's labor day weekend right yeah i'm actually shooting wedding that weekend oh, right. but i'm only there i'm just right. checking i'm just checking how many podcasts hey, in a row last week dude, you told me to stop booking weddings because you wanted me to move and so i stopped but i've had that one booked for the year now. all right, all right. All we right. got anyway, your answer go back to go, the go sit on your pillow in the corner that was the best question I've ever heard anyone ask ever, by the way. I really appreciate you. We actually, yeah. we ended up... He gasses me up more than anybody that. Yeah, he does. He's a little gassy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's why he it. appreciates my farts just as much as I do. That's right. I, All right, so, so what's Aurora's question? Aurora's question? thing was, uh, what is appropriate clothing? Something like that, right? It was, yeah, what, what uh, constitutes appropriate, appropriate clothing? clothing? Yeah, that was the question. Can I give a really simple answer? Oh, yeah, yeah go ahead. Whatever you, the wearer, thinks is appropriate. Whoa, well, what if that's the, super. Uh, yeah, what if, what if the, everybody else around you... You're going to get some bounce back from society. <laughs> yeah, what if everybody <laughs> else... I is, am. Let's see. Okay, so let's see. Let's go to, uh, let's go to a, a wedding or ba- a ball. Let's go to a fancy ball and you show up in a Speedo. Because you think, hey, I'm feeling appropriate, you know, because, like, I'm, this is, I'm comfortable here in this band. Everybody's dressed in their, like... Three-piece suits and, you know, fluffy white tuxedos. But me, I'm feeling appropriate in this tuxedo, this Speedo. That rhymes to tuxedo. What's the problem? They're literally, everybody there is probably like, this guy is here in his Speedo. That is completely inappropriate for this occasion. So... Yeah, it's like a double-edged sword because if I give my real opinion, I'll get canceled. Uh, so oh, I we don't that do that one. here. Roll no, no, no. the other side of the border. Uh, Nobody's listening anyway. I think I think everyone Bring knows it. what's appropriate and what's not, and I think that. Mm, do they? I think they do, and I think oh, that you're so no. Kind of conservative. I think no one would. Well, I think no one would show up in a speedo unless they're trying to make a statement, right? And I think that like there's just certain codes of dress that everybody knows. Unless you're from like somewhere that doesn't have that, but if you're or if from you're a here, child. or yeah, like or a child, yeah, 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 right. But like if you're a grown ass man and you go to a wedding, like you know not to wear a Guy Fieri button up shirt. Like you have to wear a real shirt and a jacket, maybe depending. You don't wear a speedo. You don't wear shorts to a wedding. Like what about th- a grown ass man coming to a wedding in a dress in California? Southern California. Yeah, see, that's like a touchy thing because then all of a sudden, if you're like, nah, it's not acceptable. Like, I don't know. I think that that's such a, like, what are you setting me up for here? <laughs> I, just wanna, I, just I don't know, but you're digging, digging deep. I know. <laughs> digging deep in the shallow end. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that if you're a dress and you feel, co- I'm sorry, I think if you're a man and you feel comfortable in a dress uh, and you're going to a wedding, then I guess that that's acceptable. I mean, as long as you're not wearing white, as long as it's as a long fancy as not, enough dress, as long as you're not wearing white, that's not my thing. I would never <laughs> wear a dress, but, uh, yeah, as long as you're not wearing white and as long as you're not like showing like your dicks hanging out or nothing, then, then you're good. 
What would do you, you think? Would you never? You would never wear a dress. There's nothing. No, no reason why you would ever. You would never ever wear a dress. Unless straight. it was like a bet or like to be funny or something. But like I don't know. I'm just like I like wearing suits. So I, if I have an excuse to wear a suit, I'm gonna wear a suit. Oh, I feel you there. I am actually kind of in the same boat. See, this is why we yeah we yeah. learn a lot of things. Yeah, I li- I have several suits. I like wearing them. I like drinking whiskey in a suit. It make it feels like a boss. I feel the power coming within me. You know, I feel like I want to take over some shit Wish right I away. Want a suit right now? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I would. Clint should be here right now. It's like, it actually, it feels very comfortable. <laughs> uh, I'm too fat for a suit right now. I ain't gonna lose this COVID weight. This, all this bourbon isn't helping me. I started, I gained the COVID weight and I started losing it already. And it's like, I'm just, I'm, I'm good now. I'm continuing going that. Yeah. Cause it got like, you know, like, you ever do that thing where you're, you're normally like a skinny dude. And then you look down, and you're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Yeah. It was like that. It's like, okay. I mean, I don't know. If I'm Especially when you're a skinny un- dude, but yeah. Well, now I'm a fatter dude. I would, I have a I have a shelf full of bodybuilding trophies and I look down and I'm like this is so unacceptable this yeah. is almost unacceptable, but yeah so I guess to answer your question, whatever you think is appropriate within reason, I'll give you a shallow answer to your shallow deep end question. That is what is appropriate is is what you think is appropriate and feel is appropriate in a reasonable state of mind. Yes. What do you think? Oh, dude, I brought up the kids for a moment because I obviously have them and clothing is just like i mean my daughter does everything in a dress almost almost everything i noticed that in all the videos she's always wearing a dress it's not because we're dressing her up that's what she wants to wear she goes hiking she goes to the beach she feeds snakes she does like she wears ballerina slippers to hike uh this is not appropriate like by any standards i don't think however I'm not stopping her. I, I do make suggestions from time to time. Like, I don't know. That you, that's not going to be comfortable. Like, those are not good hiking shoes. I don't think you should wear those. But I, I want her to, you know, maybe realize herself that these are not appropriate shoes for hiking. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, maybe if she falls on her face enough times, especially since those, these ballerina slippers happen to be a little bit too big for her feet. So it adds to the, you know, difficulty in hiking in them. Uh, maybe these are not appropriate. She can figure out her own without me having to tell her, hey, you know what, that's not appropriate. Just I try to let her figure out it's not appropriate on her own. And I try to let most people do that because it sometimes ends up being very, very entertaining. Like how you were smart, we're about to let you dive into how you felt about men wearing dresses to weddings. And, <laughs> You're going to let uh, him dig <laughs> gonna, like, see, how, see how deep he goes. <laughs> <laughs> we're always going pretty deep. It took me a while to realize what we were doing to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get that joke either, did you, comedy? Yeah, no. <laughs> I've actually worn a mini skirt before. It was Halloween, but uh, it was and it was interesting. I think at, at that age too, I was a bit younger. You know, maybe a little trimmer as well, a little more closer to my bodybuilding side of life. And uh, I think it looked pretty good in it. Like, <laughs> when I was in sixth grade, we uh-huh. had to do a wax museum thing where you like pretend to be a historical figure, and then I think there was some like activation button someone would push. And then you give like a little spiel because you did a report on this historical. Oh, I person. did that. Yeah, mine was Amelia Earhart. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't she have really long arms? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I was a I, I was Paul Revere. Yeah. Oh, were you? Yeah. Yeah, but I wore a dress in sixth grade to public school in front of everyone. I was the only cross dresser in the whole school that year. Nice. So I was not shy about it. I didn't care. But um, no, I think. I think it's a nice answer to say whatever the wearer thinks is appropriate is great, but I think that's the wrong answer. <laughs> okay. Case. I think the true answer is it's based on outside circumstances, 100%, because the even notion of saying, is it appropriate, means let's judge this. Shout out, not appropriate podcast, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, so whether it's outside circumstances like wearing ballerina shoes on a hiking thing, you know what I mean? That's not appropriate for practicality reasons, right? Or, you know, whether your clothing is to dress down at a wedding uh, or maybe it's too, you know, revealing or something in a certain circumstance. Like, like the thing with weddings is you know, you're not supposed to wear a white dress and things like that because you're not supposed to take any attention away from the bride. So you should, probably shouldn't show up dressed like a slut or something like that, like super attention on me at a wedding. That would be inappropriate, right? Even though 
I mean, you could wear that and be fine with that, and that's cool, but in that outside circumstance and in that set of situations, inappropriate because you're doing something for the wrong reasons, you know? And it does depend on how the people feel around you. So the really interesting thing that I have found in life, especially having lived in other cultures, is that things that I am naturally uncomfortable with are the appropriate things to do in certain circumstances. And I think if you are going to, to be a respectful, polite guest of a host coming from another culture or another thing, you know, I have a very strict kind of when in Rome, do as the Romans do policy. And I said in my mind, when I, meant to, when I went to Indonesia, I said, I will do everything that like if I'm staying with someone, because I traveled even a lot while I was there, I wasn't always staying in one place. But when I travel with someone, if they're offering me something, I will do it, I will take it, I will use it. And I had to draw my line, uh, and I had this preconceived before I went there at cannibalism. I said, I won't cannibalize if someone's eating grandpa because that's their tradition or whatever, <laughs> I'll just pass on that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Good God, it went so far from clothing. Well, I'm just saying... <laughs> But the clothing was a big part of it. You know what I mean? So my, my point is... They eat with the clothing on? Well, because they wear very different clothing. Yeah, yeah, but do I they mean, Thomas was making fun grandpa? of me today because I still sleep in a sarong. Yeah, but they... Oh, well, that's what I was going to talk about next. But before I get into that, do they eat grandpa wearing their clothes? Still? What's a sarong? No. No, but, okay. but the mentality, though, <laughs> sarong is like a dress. It's like you wrap it around. It's not a dress. It's like a, if you wrap a it's towel a around dress. yourself. It's a very thin, thin it's a, towel. It's a thin, lacy, long, uh, long cloth or one of the <laughs> Scottish things. What's the Kilt? Kilt, yeah. It's like a kilt, but even less man. Long and lazy. Long and thin. Yeah. <laughs> like flowy in the wind kilt. So your, ex your external inappropriate stuff, like what about internal? Like say, for example, I, more often than not sleep in jeans because I just fall asleep in the clothes I'm wearing like 95% of the time. My wife says that is inappropriate. <laughs> However, I do it all the time. It doesn't affect her at all. Like, I'm, it's not like I'm rubbing up against her with my jeans at night. You know, if I'm doing that, I'll take them off. But oftentimes I'll just pass out wherever wearing jeans. And she's just like, how do, like, why? Like, why would you do that? It's, it's not appropriate to sleep in jeans. I think to most people's standards, like pajamas or sarong or anything but jeans, I think, or would be appropriate for sleeping. So, I, why? It doesn't, I, I'm not I think, affecting I think that else. can happen. The, the interesting thing that would happen is when there is a stark disagreement between what everyone else calls appropriate for circumstances and what you strongly feel. That's where you end up in a very, and that's what, like we were talking about cross-dressing a little bit. I think that's what happens with that because the wearer strongly feels that they want to dress in this way and society is telling them that that's inappropriate. Now, I don't, I don't think that that happens very much anymore. Honestly, I think if a dude wore a dress to a wedding, I don't know that anyone would say anything about it. And if they did, everyone else would call them ignorant. Yes. As long as the dress was appropriate for the wedding. <clears throat> right. Don't wear white and don't dress like a slut. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if you wore an, a, a nice, elegant dress as a man to a wedding, I doubt you'd have any issues with it today. Everybody would look at you, but no one would say shit because you're not allowed to say anything, sure. right? So. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but yeah, so I, I think that's the interesting scenario there. And the only reason I brought up eating grandpa or whatever is because I think there's a mindset. Okay. I, I think there's a mindset behind it. As far as what's appropriate and what's not. Yeah, I think you should... Uh, em embrace the inappropriate. I like where you're going with Embrace this. the appropriate. You know what I mean? Like, Because it's, it's okay to express yourself. That's fine. But if you can do it in a mature way within parameters, you know... Then, like, you know, like you have a sleeve of tattoos here, Adam, you know what I mean? And there might be some circumstances where that's inappropriate. Probably not as much today, but rewind 30 years? Yeah, there was. Mm -hmm. You know, and because. Or 50 years or 60, yeah. Yeah, because society was different. You know, mm -hmm. that'd be fine on a Navy ship, but not anywhere else. And you'd have to wear long sleeves everywhere you go, right? So, and there's still workplaces where they're like, you gotta cover that stuff up. Mm hmm. 
So I think it's fine to express yourself, but it the you know the real way to do it is like I don't think you want to jump into those arguments any more than I want to jump jump into the conversations about hey what do you do for a living all the time. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Yeah, and I never thought of it like that. And the reason I got my tattoo cut off right here is so that if I don't want to show it, you can wear a sleeve. Right. And my sister told me, she's like, yeah, my boss told me one time, if I knew you had tattoos, I would have never hired you in the first place. So it's like, I guess it is true. And she's a secretary at a physiotherapy clinic, right? It's not yeah. like some, so people, some people still think like that, but, and I, I guess I never really thought of it like that. That's a good way to put it. Right. Right. I, I've had this talk recently with uh, Aiden, um, cause Aiden's very young and he's very much into like self-expression, but he's trying to get a new apartment right now. You know what I mean? And and him and his partner are constantly, like, every three weeks they change jobs, right? And then they have lots of piercings on their face, all kinds of tattoos, colorful hair. They have a pit bull mix dog that has a history of attacking other dogs. Oh, that's You know what I mean? And then they have two cats and 80 reptiles. And I was like, do you realize you have no job history, no credit, you look crazy, you know what I'm saying? And then you have a, a circus of animals. People don't want dogs anyway, let alone like, you know what I mean? This dog, this is the, this is the worst. It could be a great dog. There's nothing wrong against, like nothing with a pit bull mix or whatever, but that's everything you're doing right now or people is a red flag to someone saying, I'm looking for a responsible citizen who's mm-hmm. going to pay my rent on time. And I was like, this is an adulting conversation because you guys love expressing yourselves. But I'll tell you what, if you can express yourselves with what you do in life instead of just how you sit there making yourself look, you will get so much farther. (laughs) It's kind of like the actions speak louder than words. It's like clean yourself up. Bathe before you go to the the, uh, interview. Cut your hair nice. That sounds so good right now. Right? (laughs) How old is Aiden? Uh, nineteen. Okay, I can I can sympathize with that. I don't know if you noticed that my ears are all messed up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I was nineteen, they were very large, and I would go to interviews, and people would just kind of. And look then at you me. would be mad if they judged you. Yes, on that. yeah. yeah. And I was. Exactly. And I remember I wanted to get my face pierced, <sighs> and the one thing that like I hated my dad. Oh, you know, don't get tattoos. If you get a tattoo or a piercing on your face, you'll get kicked out of that. And But that was the greatest thing ever because I never got piercings on my face. And because of that, I grew out of it before I like I, I didn't want them anymore. Once right. I moved out and I don't have any scars on my face because of that, I never got turned on for a job because I had a lip piercing. Mm. So it was like the best thing ever. But yeah, I never really thought of it quite like that. So I can kind of sympathize with him because I worked at a tattoo shop, right? Sure. I have tattoos. I have piercings and, and stuff. And I completely understand it. Like I let him do all that stuff at our shop. But it's also because it's like, and I, I, the more inappropriate things that he does there is he'll wear like a sweater that's not the brand sweater. Mm. I'm like, if you ever turn the camera on yourself, you have to wear a Reach Out Reptile shirt. That's the rule now, because mm. I don't know what you're going to show up looking like. But other than that, outside of that, I let him do what he wants. That's a pretty lenient thing, too. Like, yeah, all you have to I do mean, is wear he's a uniform. Cool he doesn't care about that. Mm. But, you know, I, I don't think that they understood, like, he wanted to get some facial uh, piercings. And they were already looking for the apartment. And I was like, get the facial piercings after you sign the year lease. Yes. And he, he, next weekend he comes in and he's got those facial piercings. It's like, okay, but someone's going to turn you down for that. Well, it's not me, but it's going to be somebody. As I sit here at 30 years old, I understand that. I didn't understand that when I was 19. Or even younger, like 16. Right. Like So I, I sympathize, but at the same time. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, it's one of those things like you can't fake wisdom. Right. It's like something you have to live to. Well, well, here's a, what I think. I think the youthful brain says. Uh, hold on, uh, I yeah. fake wisdom all the time. <laughs> you can't fake wisdom in a way that other people believe you. Okay, well, let me. I fake wisdom all the time, and people believe me. <laughs> Do we, or we yeah. just go? Uh huh. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was, I was just gonna say to the young brain, like I asked you, like, were you mad? Would you be mad if someone turned you out because you got judged on your outside appearance? And yes, you would be. Mm. You know what I mean? But what you have to think is like. We're all getting judged on our outside appearances and inside appearance of the closure that we just built very shortly. So yeah, it's just I, something you have to do with. I mean, there are things where people have to pick someone and they take the information they have. 
and and 25% of the information that you're giving them is telling them at the very least, let's say that they don't care about piercings and all that kind of stuff, but they say this is an abrasive young individual. Mm-hmm. They don't care about being abrasive. They like to run and fly in their face. They're going to do what they want and they're not going to, if you say, you know, like if you have a huge tattoo on your face or facial piercings or whatever, and that's abrasive to somebody, but you don't care, what's going to stop you from playing super loud music at one o'clock in the morning and driving the other tenants out, right? You're abrasive. You don't care. So you're probably not going to make a good tenant. And that's the way people think. They're, they may not be judging you on that. They're just trying to assess your character. And if you're trying so hard on the outside to show everyone, this is my character. Look at my identity all over myself. <laughs> yep. You know what I mean? And you don't do it with your actions. You know what I'm saying? Then they can see the immaturity in that. And they want a stable, mature individual. So show them your character with what you do. And you will go so much further in life than showing them your character with what you look like. Because anybody can fake or change that. I mean, you, you said your ears are all messed up, but you were probably very proud of them at one point. Mm-hmm. So you're going to change that constantly. But who you are as a person inside didn't change. You might grow and mature, but you're still you. I'm changing constantly, Gary. As a person? Yep. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think... I think what makes you Brian makes you Brian. And what is that, Gary? Well... In at least the amount of time that I've known you, where you really need to go ask my friend, your dad, that question, because he's known you longer than that. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, in the time that I've known you, it's that you care very much about people. You want to become a better a, a better uh, version of yourself every day. You want to continue to evolve and grow. You want to you value experiences more than tangible things. You value connections with people. And I, I would assume that you've probably had that your whole life. Or if you didn't, then you, it was probably something where you, an area of your life where you expected, you experienced emptiness. And then you realized how to fill it because you were completely neglecting a part of yourself that needed to be fed and trained and grown until you figured that out. All right, I guess you know me. <laughs> I'm just making wisdom, but I said it with confidence, so you believe me. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. It's full that's circle. True too. <laughs> I'm very influenced right now. <laughs> You're under the influence of the class. Do you I, need some more? Yeah, actually, I do. I thought so. I, uh, no, I'm actually pretty tired. It was, it's been a long. Uh, it's been a long day. It's been a long I few days. Reach that. That's right. Do you does one of you want to check into my flight to, uh, four hours from? Oh, I was almost said tomorrow. It's oh, what four are you hours. Doing, bro, <laughs> good God! I wasn't thinking we we're gonna finish this bottle in an hour and a half. Oh, but we are. <laughs> oh, good God! <laughs> wow, I mean, this is barrel proof, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's good barrel proof. Though. Man, Very I'll tell you what, bowl. though, gentlemen, this is it is good. One of the best bourbons that I've had. And now that I say that, my dad watches everything that I do. He's gonna be like, "Can you buy me a bottle of that next time you're in the states?" Penelope bourbon, and I will. Barrel so strength. who is so? Uh, this is from SoCal Herbs, right? Oh uh, yes. Mm-hmm. And so that's California, obviously. Well, he this actually I got this from on a recommendation of his fi- one of his his actual favorite. <laughs> whiskey reviewer on youtube um recently who is the re- whiskey reviewer uh matt at porter at adhd whiskey okay um but this my point is he didn't go out and buy this bro he he put the funds up and i got this bought okay um, <laughs> bless you but it's yeah bless you again um it's source i believe this is probably mgp but it's um is it where does it say it's distilled on the back of that bottle a place in Kentucky I've never heard of before. Oh, is that what it said? So it's got to be Kentucky, otherwise they can't call it bourbon. Oh, that's not actually. They can be made anywhere in the United States. But they can't call it bourbon. Yes, they can. I don't see it. Ooh, we, sweet, we got to learn some stuff. Uh, Bairdstown, bourbon Kentucky. Bourbon can be made anywhere in the United States. Long Distilled in Lawrenceburg, corn. Indianapolis. Indianapolis. So, and oh, so that it can't be called straight bourbon. Bottled. No, it Kentucky. can't be called straight bourbon. There is something Bottled where in like, there is a wor- Kentucky. some Kentucky. phrase. <laughs> Kentucky no, bourbon. it's something it's else. Kentucky. It's something else. Um, all bourbon can be made all over the place. Straight bourbon can be made anywhere. It's got to be. Uh, 
the Kentucky thing, the, well, Bourbon County is in Kentucky, and that is where bourbon originated. However, mm-hmm. as long as it's 51% corn, new age, charred oak, uh, made in America, uh, if it wants to be straight, it has to be at least two years aged. If it's less than four years, it has to be stated on the bottle to be straight bourbon. Um, but, yeah, bourbon is just, is, is that. It doesn't have to be made in Kentucky. And the only way it would have to be made in Kentucky is if it's actually Kentucky straight bourbon. I think there's something else, too. Mm. My first channel is a whiskey channel. I remember preaching this over and over. I would, if you can show me what you're talking about and back it up. But as far as I know... <laughs> if you can back, I think you're talking straight If you guys are listening shit. to this yeah. and going crazy in your car right now because Brian Cusco is wrong... Jump over to the YouTube channel right. and comment below. <laughs> or go to the Facebook group, Search for Reptiles. Is oh, that's a good... Yeah, actually, Adam, you should jump on that. We have a Facebook community group for Searchable as Reptiles. And it's a occasionally active group because we only release these once a month. Matt's actually but, supposed to be keeping that group running and eating, you know. Yeah, but he brought us some really nice that's bourbon true. this yeah, time. So I this is that. nice. But um, that is a great group. There are so many cool people in that group. It is my favorite place on YouTube. Yeah? Facebook. Of all of them. Uh, yeah, sorry. Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, I know of made. all of them. Yeah. So. <sighs> Bust your phone out. Prove me wrong. Well, I, I want to look it up because I, I might be wrong about this, but there is something that I'm thinking of. Applebee's menu. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> I, I think yeah. I know what you're talking about, but it's, I mean, I... Well, I guess I can just look. Does bourbon? I, I think that there is something that you know what we're talking about. Now, bourbon can be made anywhere in the United States. This is this was sourced in Indiana, right? Is that what you said? It was distilled there. Distilled yeah. in Indiana. So yeah, this is some MGP stuff. Yep. One rule that does not apply to bourbon is that it must be made in. So you're right. Yeah. I know. Is bourbon always made in Kentucky? Uh, no. Oh yeah. So I'm just full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. It's all good. Yeah. I can't remember I'm what I'm thinking of. There's that. something hey, like, yeah, some you're certain You're Canadian. Type. I do not blame you one bit. That's true. That is true. So, Adam, I have a question for you. I have an answer for you. I, I want to know a little bit about your life journey from bodybuilding to stand-up comedy to just keeping reptiles mm-hmm. and then making a YouTube channel about reptiles. What, sure. What, you're all over the place, man. What's going on? Um, so, I got a problem where, like, if I want to do a thing... I do that thing all the time. Oh, I have always. That that's all I think about. Cusco knows that I have this problem. Yeah, and it's good for you two because you have sure. to always like you have that to has be completely to... absorbed by it. Right, and I am, and so uh, the first thing, so bodybuilding. Except that you've never met any other YouTubers ever, but go, go ahead. Yeah, well, I talk to them on the internet. Right, <laughs> we're all internet friends, right? Yeah, true. <laughs> Until today when true. we actually met, but. Yeah, so whenever, when I was a kid, if you asked me when I was six, what do you want to do? I would say I want to be Steve Irwin and a comedian. That's what I would have told you. Okay. The first book I ever read was a book by Jeff How old are you? I'm 30. Okay. So I was born in 91. Okay. That helps you. So Jeff Fox with you was the biggest thing. I read a book. It was on my parents' nightside table. I barely knew how to read. I was, I was late at learning how to read. That was the first book I ever read. And I, I watched Steve Irwin because when I was a kid, the rule was if you want to watch TV, you can watch whatever you want as long as it's educational. That's it. That was the only rule. So I watched things about uh, dinosaurs and snakes and things like that. And I watched comedy, blue collar comedy when that started. Like my parents were really cool. If, I, if they had a date night and I had a babysitter, they were going to Yuck Yucks, which is the comedy club in, right in Niagara Falls. So I've always been interested in those two things. So I have started keeping reptiles later when I was like 18 or 19 or whenever I would like started paying rent at home. And I was allowed to do that because my parents both don't like snakes and don't like lizards and stuff. So I brought home a bearded dragon. And then I had a choice. So at 19, I met a buddy of mine who's actually pouring a driveway at my house tomorrow. And he's like, you should come to the gym with me. So I started going to the gym with him. And I became obsessed with that. And then someone had a comedy night and they're like, you should do comedy. And I became obsessed with that, like actually doing it because I've always wanted to try that. So I'm like, okay, I've got a choice here. I can either go all in with one or the other thing. And I chose bodybuilding because I'm young one time. And you can do comedy forever. So I chose that. So I did that. And that was Sounds in... Like wisdom. Yeah, right. So, or like, I don't know. I just wanted... I wanted to get laid a lot. That's basically it. And <laughs> muscles help you with that. So, uh, so I decided to do that. And that was like 2010. And I remember making the decision. It was July 17th. I looked at myself in the mirror. I'm like, if you start today, then next year at this day, you'll be like, I can't. 
I, I'm so glad that I started. And I went every day and I was obsessed and I went over the border. I went over to uh, Tops in the States to buy food because it was cheaper. And I ate every two hours and I did everything I was supposed to do. And then in 2013, a friend of mine's like, we should go to a bodybuilding contest. So I went and then that day I decided, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And I thought I was going to do it forever. And then in 2014, I won um, first place in both my categories in the regional, whatever the regional one was, Henderson Thorne. And then in provincial, I took first and a second place. And then the next year, I went and competed at the uh, Canada's in 2015. And I took eighth place in one co- division and second place in the other. And so I qualified to go compete in Estonia the next year. I told my, tore my shoulder apart. And at this point, I had a leopard gecko and two bearded dragons. And that was it. So then I decided, okay, well, bodybuilding's done. I'm done with this. And so I just started collecting more reptiles. I got into hognose snakes. What year was that? 2015. Okay. Uh, so I got my first reptile in 20, uh, 2008 or something. Uh, so I started getting more of those, and I became the reptile guy. And then in uh, 2015, a guy who I did my first bodybuilding contest bought a comedy club. And I'm like, okay, start, I tried this once. I really like this. And I listened to podcasts all the time. I went through like this breakup. I went on a business trip and I came home and all my shit was gone, basically. So to get through that, I listened to like all these podcasts because it was silent in the house and I needed like sound. And it was all comedy podcasts. I'm like, okay, so I should start this. So I did, started doing comedy on the 7th of September, 2017. And then it's like, okay, this is what I do now. This is just what I do. And then I started doing, I had 20 something reptiles and the girl I was dating at the time, we started breeding ball pythons. And then... Uh, that ended and we sold most of the ball pythons and then some comedy producer they work for in Brantford, uh, Oddball Comedy, and uh, he's like, you should start a YouTube channel. And I just got fired from one job and I was about to start another job. So he's like, you should start a YouTube channel about you have, you're funny, you have the personality and you have the reptiles. You should do something. So then I just did. I made social media that day, January 14th, 2019. And then two days later, I put up two I videos. I remember remembers every date. I'm so good with dates. Okay. I'll remember this date forever. <laughs> uh, I remember dates, so... Well. I don't know this date today. <laughs> it's got to be like August 11th, I think. Is it 2021 still? Uh, it'd be August 12th <laughs> now, yeah. But, yeah, 2022. Wow, he is good. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, yeah, that's... So basically, I just started that, and I just decided... I watched a video, like, how to be good at YouTube. Yeah. And the guy, what the guy said was, it was Peter McKinnon, and what he said was, you can never miss an upload. So I never missed an upload. I've I've uploaded it twice Peter a week. Lo- misses every week. uploads. <laughs> I know all the time. Misses, I know he's the worst. So or maybe it was Matty Hapoya, one of those guys, Canadian he also guys. Uploads. All the time. Didn't he move to Sweden or something? I he's don't know. Back. Is he back? So yeah, I just decided. And when I make like, I, and the thing is with with YouTube is like I can't tear my shoulder apart and not like unless I get a brain injury. You right? should try doing it with half a face for a couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did, this, what, did you get Bell's palsy or something? Yes, he yep. did. Is this real? Yeah, that's yeah, real. Yeah. Yeah, I was worried. Every, everybody, everybody was. Everyone thinks it's made up. Like, everybody was Minnesota super worried, except for Garrett. At least, at least from what yeah. he showed. When was this? Last year, November. Really? Go back and watch the videos. I just sat down and kept doing the videos. I was like, oh yeah, my face doesn't work anymore since yesterday. Was it like a stress thing? Like how did that happen? Lyme disease. Lyme disease. Oh, so you have Lyme disease? Yes, yeah, so I have like little creatures in my blood eating parts of my. Do you brain do you pull strands into your skin? Nerves. Huh? Just, no, no, that's gross. I hope that doesn't happen. I, I met have a Lyme guy disease again. He I got pulls, it again. He pulls twice in twice within a year. Yeah, so no, he, he pulls do. strains out of his brain, and sometimes I'm just like, oh, is this, I met is a guy this one true, time, or is this yeah. the Lyme disease talking? I don't know. The day I got a drone, I remember I took it to fly somewhere, and this guy was like, on a moped, and he was pulling shit out of his skin. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I got more gelins. I'm like, oh, so you have Lyme disease. He's like, yeah, no one knows what that is. I'm like, yeah, I listen to Rogan's podcast. I know what that is. <laughs> that's yeah, that's wild, dude. I had no idea. It's that's... gnarly. It's not a fun thing to go through. I bet. Yeah. Yeah, the face thing was weird. I, I was just like, how long did it last? I can't feel it. I just slapped myself on that thing. It lasted a few, while, a few, few months. A couple, few months, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I watched I didn't some videos. Know. I was at Bar Checks the last time I went to Bar Checks. Yep. And I was interviewing him with half a face. Dude, and you... Really? Oh, oh yeah. And dude. I went live. I had to wear a pirate eye patch because I couldn't close my eyes Dude, he killed... He killed Noah Bar Check in the kitchen, dude. <laughs> killed him. Yeah? Because he was doing some impression of... He was talking about some guy, like, doing talking about... He's doing some kind of, like... 
you know, like mentally retarded impression of something or somebody. He's like, he was talking about the Indonesian people that like are naturally, Lata. they have Lata. Lata. Not, it's not mentally like, retarded. It's not mentally yeah. retarded. It's like somebody speaks a certain way and then that person will speak like them because it's like they're right. naturally just want, they want to be like the person they're talking to or like, you know, just totally feeding off the energy and I'm going to be like you because that's probably what's going to make you most comfortable. And it happened to be some like mentally retarded thing that you were doing for sure, like your impression and like your face just fit the part at the moment of what you're doing. <laughs> so Noah, Noah was like, wow, this guy's really good at doing impressions of people <laughs> with mental handicaps. And then he, and then it clicked in his head. He's like, oh, wait, he has a mental <laughs> handicap. That's why he's so good. He, and he just fell on the he floor. Fell he fell on the floor. Breathe. He couldn't breathe. He was dying. Thanks, it Noah. Oh, my God. It made me laugh Man. so much harder just because he was dying. Like no that. one knew why he was laughing, and then after he said it, I was like, "Oh, great!" Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so I, I that's what I get. I passively from. challenged Noah Barshak to a mental things, but to yeah. a roast battle. He never replied. You'll beat I, him. That's why. He, he, oh, I'll destroy him. It won't even be. It won't even be fair. Yeah, I know. Don't even be fair. I am a three-time Niagara Rose Battle champ. I will destroy that kid. But I do like him. I do like Noah. I think he's cool. I can't wait to meet that guy. I can't wait to go to Barch. I've never been to Barchuk's place. That's pretty fun. Yeah, I can't wait to go. Yeah, it's a great place. He's super hospitable. Like, yeah, I've heard nothing but good things. Super hospitable. Yeah, the whole like that whole family. Like, I don't know. I, it's cool. Like now that I've done this once. Like, Although if Lori doesn't like you, she just doesn't like you. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Well, I watch a channel. She, I, I think understand that's how she's. The fault is that she doesn't like you for a while. And you yeah. Know, and you know what's funny is Jay Brewer's wife Becky is like that too. Yeah. I remember being very proud that she liked me. She liked me enough to like check for my ring finger, like because they have three daughters, and she's like, well, I kind of like this guy. I should marry one of my daughters someday. So I was like, wow, <laughs> she really likes me. Yeah, uh, no, so. you'll you'll enjoy yourself when you go there, man. That, hopefully, we get to go there together because that'd be fun. Man, I would love to. There's a few, there's a few. So that's a bucket list one. Nerd is another one. I talk too much shit about Jay Brewer, so I don't know if he'll invite me there. But no, I, I didn't I don't, even really talk no, bad no, about no, him. Didn't. I didn't think you did. No, you didn't. No, so I don't know. There's a few of them. I I, I feel very fortunate to be whatever I did to have the number because, like you said, the number doesn't mean anything. That your subscriber count yeah. and you should like it, it has no value i feel very fortunate to whatever it was that i did that or whatever it was that the algorithm did to let me get a big enough number where people invite me to stuff you, so, you're a classic look, example of just following the rules yeah you got you it. got good like you delivery. i think you said i want to have a youtube channel how would i be successful at that it's not an enigma how to do it mm -hmm. and you do it very well well, thank you. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I think the difference between Brian and myself is, like, Brian wants to have videos of his family doing stuff with kids and might as well upload it to YouTube along the way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want to sell more Superdorf retakes. No one knows who I am or feels like they can trust you online. So I want people to... I, I'm very authentic and on my stuff. At least I try to be. And, uh, you know, so people can get to know me before they actually know me and feel safe enough to be like, I'll buy from that guy. He seems trustworthy. I it's found true. your channel. You're yeah. a super dwarf uh, nerd. Some like nerd who like knew everything about super dwarfs. He's like, you know who reach out reptiles? And I'm like, no. And that's how I started watching your channel. There yeah. was a good solid when few months. When you started months. watching my channel, we had the same number of subscribers. I know. Yeah. I know, I remember Does that. that. Yeah, you're smiling now. You're like, <laughs> that makes me feel really good. No, I, I, rem I don't remember the <laughs> date, but yeah. No, I remember because that was like right like after. Six, seven times my, my amount now. Well, there, there was a good solid few months, I'd say, where like every, like every other video is like, what if... I wonder if people still watch my videos if I did this. <laughs> like, what if I put saran wrap over the lens and blow snot directly down the camera? <laughs> people are like, drink your pee, I love you. That was wild. That was so wild. Yeah, that was something else. My man. favorite part was when my employee Rob also drank his pee, but not for any money or good reason. Yeah, that was something and, else. But, the, but it wasn't the fact that he drank the pee. It was when Hillary looks in the camera and is like, Someone else is going to do it? Like, I know my husband, and he will do that. But there's another person on the planet that will drink his pee, and actually, for completely less motivation. Yeah, your wife is a winner, eh? Like, Oh, yeah. Man, that you got lucky with that one. Oh, yeah, definitely. I like that you say that to his face, because every time I'm hanging out with Brian and anyone else, 
we walk away and he's like, and everyone, everyone says this, man, if Brian wasn't with Hillary, <laughs> wow, is he so lucky? Oh, Hillary. Everyone <laughs> says that. So, and she is, she's, she's great. She's awesome. Yeah. I've never met her, but she seems like just a gem putting it like, yeah, I'll just drink your own pee. I'll be here for that. That's <laughs> she, she literally said, make sure you call me before it's going to happen. I want to come down and watch. I remember I explained that to my chick too. And she's like, what? I thought it was a reptile podcast. I'm like, no, it's got No, that wasn't this podcast. That was all him. Yeah. That, that, that was, was fun, dude. Channel. I'll tell you what though, man, I've been on. I've been on a lot of podcasts. The most fun I've ever had was on the Triple B TV one. That Boom. was the best one. That was yeah. that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. He does a good job of that. Yeah. I like that fun. It felt very authentic because I've done like a lot of them. And like this whole experience has been like very authentic and everyone's cool. But on the internet, it's harder. Like when you meet someone on the internet. Yeah. Well, you, you just don't know. You just don't know if they're being them or something else. Yeah. And I've done a lot of them. But with yours, obviously, you know what you're doing with the camera and stuff, right? Which helps. So it's like good production value and you have experience but it also just felt like the personalities worked and it wasn't like awkward at all and it worked it was a fun it one. did work with us it doesn't always happen with me especially over the internet like that like yes. I, I do much better in person mm -hmm. with people that would maybe be awkward but if, if it's going to maybe be awkward and it's not in person then it can definitely be awkward because i don't do i prefer in person 100 mm -hmm. like i'd rather be here with you right now doing this like this I, we won't do this again unless we're in person. Yes. Like, well, maybe we would because actually, I, I take that back because actually with us it did work. Like you yes. said, it worked. So because I think we're we're alike enough and like the personalities, like you said, it just works mm -hmm. to where we didn't have to. There was no trying. It was just natural. You have so. to be able to be vulnerable. Maybe that comes with the whole comedian package. Maybe you're a comedian because you're vulnerable or you learn not. To oh, one hundred percent. All comedians are messed up, dude. So yeah, actually, I have a question for you. You were saying that you started listening to comic stuff when you came home and your girl left you and your apartment was empty mm -hmm. so are you and that's kind of part what drove you to comedy yeah so are you like one of these depressed comedian types um i do a lot of self-deprecating stuff but like i mean look at me come on like there's a lot to make jokes about so but i don't like i don't feel bad for myself like i'm not depressed like i no so that's what i'm asking more on like an inner level you outside of comedy because I, I know they go hand in hand a lot of times. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. But I'm asking, like, is that something you can relate to or not really? Um, yes. I think that... But I think that the, like, trauma of it is more, like, in the past. Like, not being accepted as a kid. More than, like, what's happening now. So I think that I'm pretty well set up now. Um, but... I think all comedians like have something wrong with them. Like no regular person, no normal person is gonna be like, you know what I should do today? Go stand in front of a hundred people with a microphone, no band, no other buddy, no anybody else, no one to bail me out and say words with the expectation that I make them laugh. Oh, and it has dude, to be about my life. I need to be a comedian. You should. Mm -hmm. I, I just, like everything you're saying right there. Like nobody feels like that. I feel like that all the time. Every, so every, every <laughs> you'd have to be funny though. <laughs> oh, oh. And not just looking. No, you guys are so good at this. <laughs> I think everybody, everybody who says to me, "I want to try comedy," I say the same. You should, you should, you should. Five minutes, and you should find an open mic, and you should do it. And Clint said that to me at dinner, uh, whatever day it is oh now. Oh my gosh, Clint would be so. That guy is so freaking witty. Yeah. He's quick. He so oh my I gosh. That. And it's like in his videos, it's like that. But you can edit videos. You never yeah. know. Right. And then no. I'm standing behind him. He doesn't even know he's anyone's even, listening he's even to him. Faster in no. person. <laughs> yes, and it's like so. I think, and that's what I said to Clint. I'm like, I think that you've got this. He's faster in person because he's not watching what he says anymore. Right. He's not edited. But he's unique. What he says, oh like the things gosh, that he say, I don't. So I wouldn't think. To He's say. so freaking funny. So I and think not there's, in the way that you would think either when you like Well, I think also channel. YouTubers, it's the same sort of thing. Like normal people don't like to put their whole life on display. And especially with channels like yours, where you put your entire life on display, your your kids, your wife, everything. And that's yeah. not like a normal no most people wouldn't feel comfortable <laughs> with that. So I think any like you, if you were thinking about trying comedy, you should do I know you've said you've tried it a few times, but or once well, or whatever. I've done it when I'm not doing comedy, like right. when I'm doing do public speaking. I get people laughing. It's happened right. every time. Uh, that's the difference between, with comedy. Though, the expectation is that's you, you're gonna make them laugh, yeah, right? Sure. And that's what's that's what's tough. Sure. It's like it's like if you show someone a song, the song's great, and then they almost never think it's great because that's the expectation. 
right? Or a movie or whatever. True. I have no doubt it would be harder if I wasn't, if everybody was expecting right. to be made to laugh. Well, that's why everyone, oh, I'm the class clown. All my friends think I'm funny. It's like, okay, it's a different thing. It's a different animal yeah. altogether. Okay. But I think that everyone who wants to try it should try it. 100%. Because there's no better feeling in the entire... I there's no better feeling. No, I, I love making yeah. people... That's what I'm talking about. Like, when I'm doing that thing and, like, I actually did it the last time that I was doing it. I was, like, I actually went in with the expectation, like, I'm going to try and make people laugh mm -hmm. at this this time. And it, and it worked. And I was doing it. But, again, it, there wasn't an audience that was being, expecting that they were going to be made to laugh. So... That's why I like doing stuff like going to dinner with friends or, like, doing stuff like this. Because, to me, my expectation for myself... I said that to you at dinner yesterday. I'm not here to win a competition. I'm here to make everybody laugh and have a good time. So that is my priority. I don't care if I win this at all. It means, like, I want the plaque. I want to do good. I don't want to be disrespectful of the competition. But at the same time, the reason I flew all the way here is to make everyone laugh and have a good time and, like, oh, that's that guy. That guy made me laugh. That guy said that. I don't that. think you made me laugh yet. Did that, you? I'm pretty sure you didn't. Probably not. Okay, make me laugh. So I, I have an expectation. I have, right. a very, I have a really good joke for you. Okay. Why um, can't you hear pterodactyl go to the bathroom? Why? Because the P is silent. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. You got it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely got him. He was I laughed a little at the joke, and then I laughed that I laughed because you got me. <laughs> See, and I knew that's what was gonna happen. That's, that's oh, the yeah. man. Yeah, the expectation. So, but there's no, but there's no expectation from anybody else. My no kids, one's going there my, thinking you're like, kill my kids with that and take that one good straight one. home to the. the Kids who are like learning how to spell and love dinosaurs right now. That's it. Was a five year old it. who told me the joke for real? Yeah. So it my works. my favorite reptile joke was a uh, eight year old that told me. What's the joke? He goes, "Hey, do you know a good reptile vet?" And I was like, "Why? Yeah, you got a reptile that needs something?" He goes, "Yeah, well, I need somebody to check, check out these sick, sick pythons." <laughs> <laughs> Which way to the beaches are that way? Bodybuilding reptile joke. For I like you. that's a there good one. Go. I like that. Maybe I should open with that one. Yeah, yeah I got somebody to check out these sick pythons. <laughs> he tried to sell me that joke one time to do on my thing with with bar check that we used to do a lot, <clears throat> but I didn't use it. Yo, do you have a good number for a vet? Because these puppies are sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh -huh. Should we close on that? I don't think so. <laughs> so how did your podcast end? Oh, I made the dumbest joke I could ever think of. Yeah. Nope, we can't follow that. Don't want to follow Adam after his comedy rap. <laughs> end it there. Plus, so yeah. the bourbon is gone. Dr but Cusco drank it all with those heavy pours. <laughs> uh, you, oh, man, you, you got better drink like two more glasses yourself, Adam. You need to pass out real quick. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it's a tonight. good idea for me to go to sleep even. <laughs> yeah, it's probably stay what up. Time you got an hour and a half. I gotta, yeah, I gotta go at four. I gotta leave at four. It's an hour and a half. That's what Dion said too. If it was like, me, I would sleep. I would always sleep. Yeah, That's I do funny. nap, bro. I nap. That's the thing too. Is like today was a long day, and I know I nap when I go. I usually nap thirty minutes a day at least. Wow, it's been rough. Be nice. I have four kids. That yeah, happen. I don't have kids. That's the great thing. They right? nap. Until I move to the States and pump one out so I can stay. Like a sneaky yeah. little rat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sneaky little Canadian rat. If you, Okay, so one last question before we, we'll... What, if you could live in any city, because I know you've lived in a bunch. If you could live in any city in the U.S., which one would you live in? Pittsburgh. Okay, why? It, it, I mean, Brian, you've been there. Yeah. It's a great place. It's pretty cool. As long as you don't have to be a Steelers fan, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> You kind of do. I know. That I'm a Patriots fan, so. Oh, my gosh. Get out. <laughs> okay, we're not going to post this spot. <laughs> right, if you had to live in any... City. Well, my grandfather's from Pittsburgh, and my mother's from New England. Well, my grandmother's from New England, so you guys are both like... Pittsburgh is a, <laughs> Pittsburgh's a big city, and it has all of that. It's a beautiful place because it's all about mountains and rivers and trees and stuff. Super cool natural areas. A lot of, like, glacial-formed like rock places you can climb around and stuff. Um, big city, small town feel. You can walk right through the middle of downtown, everyone waves and smiles at you as you walk by. And uh, it's just a cool place. There's 400 bridges in the city, so it feels like the Jetsons driving around there. Everyone's like on these different levels in the sky. 400 bridges? Over 400 bridges just oh, wow. within the city. And then, and then um, you drive 10 minutes north or whatever, and it's like... Suburbs and farmland and man, don't sell me on Pittsburgh because that sounds exactly like a place I'd want to live. Oh, I want to live also, in a place just like that. Also, no wildlife laws, with the exception of a couple weird things like uh, you can't have 
sugar gliders. No, I'm sorry. You get yeah, sugar gliders and hedgehogs because they might carry leprosy or something. Everything else you can have. Well, I thought Maybe you were gonna say what over. town, like where in the world. Uh, so that's well, not... I want to move to the U.S. I'm still looking for places. Right. That <laughs> might be a different question, but honestly, Pittsburgh would still be high up the list, even if you said world. Really? Yeah. I was a big fan of a lot of uh, places in Northern Ireland. Uh, so that's what that's where my mind went. As soon as you asked, started asking the question, I started thinking about Northern Ireland. Really that's sad there. because you don't live there and I do live in Pittsburgh that's, that's, but that's the world if you're going to say in the United States I'm in it now too the Tascadero is I mean we ended up there because we wanted to and we haven't left there because that's where we want to be I guess that's the difference right because you both live in places where you want to live mm-hmm. I don't I live in a place where I was born but I didn't always live there you know what I mean but you I, do now I yeah. was born in yes, Pittsburgh neither, neither oh, but I left when I was five Oh, so you didn't choose to leave. Hmm. I'm choosing to leave where I am. I've lived there my entire life. I actually like it, but it's, it's in Canada. So I think that Austin should be your jumping point. It's a great introduction to the United States, and it's probably going to be right up your alley. Austin was one of the cities that my wife and I looked at when we were trying to leave California. I would not recommend California as beautiful as Atascadero is. California is messed up. Yeah, well, I'm trying to leave a government and like a not government. I don't want to say, like make it pol- political, but like a culture very much like health. I'm trying to leave that, so yeah. I don't really want to move back to it. No, hey, dude, dude, our part of California is not the uh, right. I always think Southern the California are made California. Uh, look, we don't follow the laws that <sighs> LA sets. It, we don't. We just don't. It's just a, we we're allowed to have open containers all over our town. I can really? walk down the street. I can sit on City Hall and drink my whiskey. That's pretty dope, actually. And you can have retex, obviously. Yeah. So. All of animal laws are... I mean, you're, you're allowed to... Technically, you're only allowed to have 60 rabbits and a certain amount of hooved creatures, depending on how much... There, there you are have, a lot but, of state regulations on exotics in California. Yeah, we're going to fall into the task of <laughs> <laughs> No venomous, no talking to you ain't going to find no city or county you can mess with you in that in our county town. <clears throat> but yeah, Austin is your jumping point, bro. Yeah, well, we're definitely moving to Texas, but we're just trying to figure out where. So Austin. Somewhere outside Austin, inside Austin. Outside. San Marcos, what uh, Annie was saying, I think that's that's the place. The, the laws are very free there. The weather is really nice, right? Like, I, I don't know. I just think that, like, Texas is the place. I know, I know people in Austin, too, so you, yeah. you could have some contacts as soon as you get there. Man, it's all my friends who moved to the States for comedy, they all live in Austin, all of them. Well, it's becoming, I mean, you know why. You pay I know why. You know why. It's, yeah. it's jumping off. It's about to jump off. Yeah. They, they are also very, like, as the rest of the U.S. starts to close down, Texas is opening up. Mm-hmm. So it is trending in the direction it sounds like you want to go anyway. And the part of the thing about Canada is, like, I know that, sure, COVID will be over eventually. But the next thing that happens like this, Canada is ready to shut down. Like, they'll shut down everything. They don't care about your job. They don't care about your family. They don't care about your mental health. They just want everything shut down immediately. They're more than happy to give you your $2,000 a month, which is what we gave to people who are unemployed. And that's it. Be dependent on the government. And I, I do not, I don't want that. I have very American values, I think. So. Oh, that, 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 that camera that. just shut off on its own. I think we're... I think we're <laughs> that was good. That was a good way to end. <laughs> we're going to let Adam sign off this podcast. Are we, Garrett? I said that. I made an executive decision. Okay. Uh, I want to say thank you for both of you. It was a pleasure meeting both of you, by the way, because I'm about to walk out here and probably not see you for months at a time. So... Um, yeah, the most fun podcast I've ever had was with you. So thank you for having me on another one. I really appreciate it. This is a really cool setup that you got there. And I've been on your podcast too, and that was awesome as well, except for you didn't run it. So that's why it wasn't the best one. Mm. You run yeah, your we'll own podcast. You and me sometime. Yeah, but I... Uh, I you have to come to my shop. And we'll I don't live there. that far. Yeah. And the plan is it's to do a, a lot of travel. Drive. It's a four-hour drive. Come on down. I'll show you Pittsburgh. My parents used to go down to Pittsburgh to go shopping at whatever outlet mall you have there or whatever for Christmas. So, yeah, I would love to come see your place. I've never really, like, handled a large retic before, so. I don't have any of those. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe by your standards. I think it'd be be fun. We'll have Rob bring his over. Yeah? Yeah. So my sign-off is uh, thank you. These are two of, like, the best dudes in the reptile industry, in my opinion, and it's been a pleasure to meet both of you. And uh, if you'll ever have me at your facilities, 
your house, your podcast ever again. I'd love to do it again. Yeah, you're more than welcome. Every time, all day. Also, wow, the brown nosing. Strong with this guy. <laughs> no, he's Canadian. being honest. He's being honest. <laughs> Good stuff. Good night. I like this tripod. Searchable as a reptile.